Birmingham. Stick and stay with us for that. Birmingham quarterback Matt Dunnigan last week reached yet another milestone, moving in to second all-time in the CFL in passing yardage. And now, only Ron Lancaster remains. And all of pro football names like Unitas, Montana, Faust, Marino, and Tarkington could be the next to fall. As you know, you, you accumulate yardage and you pass those folks and whatnot, you, he takes some pride in the, knowing that, hey, there's some good people went before you. You know, when I'm out there, it's my office, you know, and um, I'm going to let it eat. I'm going to let it all hang out and I get up in people's face. And I get excited. I'm a very emotional player. I know that I leave it on the football field week in, week out, do whatever it takes to win. But, and uh, that's where I've been for the last 13 years. And I want to play the game uh, that way and just keep going to the wheels fall off. Venue. This is legendary Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Tonight it is CFL action here on ESPN2. The Stampeders and the Barracudas, Calgary and Birmingham. These two teams met one week ago at McMahon Stadium in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and it was a showdown of the league's top two quarterbacks, Doug Flutie and Matt Dunnigan. They battled all night long, but then with under two minutes remaining and down by four, Dunnigan went to work, completing six passes in a row to five different receivers. He marched his football team down the field. Calgary had not lost at home since 1992. Dunnigan's team had a minus two yards offensively up to this drive, and then with under 10 seconds remaining, he hit Eddie Britton, and the upset was official. Calgary was a loser at home to Birmingham. Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg along with the coach, Mike Gottfried. And, Mike, you talk about Matt Dunnigan. When Birmingham decided they were going to play in the CFL, they got Jack Pardee, and then Jack Pardee went out and got Matt Dunnigan. Well, Mike, Matt Dunnigan has a cannon for an arm and a quick release with the mentality of a linebacker playing the quarterback position. John Jenkins told me before the game, the offensive coordinator, that he's picked the system up quicker than any quarterback he's ever had. So to tonight, I think he's going to see a lot of different coverages from this Calgary team. So it might be a different style of defense he's going to watch tonight. Well, unfortunately, we won't have the great matchup of quarterbacks we had one week ago. For the first time in his four-year career as the quarterback of the Calgary Stampeders, Doug Flutie is out of the lineup due to injury. The four-time CFL MVP who has really electrified the crowds at McMahon Stadium and around Canada and the U.S. And he is nice enough to join us live on the sidelines. And Doug, first of all, I know you went to Dr. Frank Job yesterday. What's the extent of the injury, as you can tell? Well, he believes there is a tear of the muscle and at some point I may need surgery for it. The question is, and we're, we're talking about it, can I rehab it throughout the year? Can I keep throwing, keep playing and get through this season and then at the end of the season talk about surgery? I don't know. Uh, we're not positive right now how bad the tear is and... Uh, you know, hopefully within a few weeks it'll heal up strong enough that I can start throwing again. Well, the muscle Doug's talking about is in the elbow, basically, of your throwing arm, and I'm sure it's not an easy thing for you to stand on the sidelines and watch your team this, play. This could be the toughest thing I've had to do all year. Uh, the second half last week was pretty tough. Doug, it's Mike Godfrey. Tell us a little bit about Jeff Garcia, your replacement tonight. Jeff plays, uh, he's, he's playing a lot like I play. Uh, he's, he's agile, he's mobile, he's not blazing fast. But he's got the ability to make, thing hap make things happen on his own. He is very comfortable with this offense, takes good reads, and makes some smart decisions. I just hope he gets off to a good start so he can get comfortable right away. We've got a couple offensive, new offensive linemen in there, and it could be a little tougher on Jeff because of that. Well, Doug, we appreciate your time here this evening, and I uh, wish we were seeing you in the lineup. Get healthy. All righty, thanks. Doug Flutie joining us live, and there's a familiar face. Luis Sendejas to kick off. Birmingham has won the toss and elected to defer, and back deep are Marvin Coleman, number 17, and number 86, Pee Wee Smith, to receive the kick for the Stampeders. Stampeders with a record of 7-1, and one. Barracudas 5-3, and three, and we're underway. Taken by Coleman at the 18-yard line. Coleman moves to the outside, and he's brought down at the 30. Tackle made on the play by Drew David, number 32. Calgary offensively, really the man we need to focus on now is the quarterback, number seven, Jeff Garcia, Alan Pitts, Pee Wee Smith, David Sapunjas. Three good wide receivers who Garcia will look to go to on frequent occasion. Now, Garcia is a man who comes out of San Jose State 
and did have good success in his limited time last week in a quarter of a half of football against this Birmingham team. The rookie making his first CFL start. Starts from the 30-yard line. And he will be rushing out of the pocket and working his way nicely, improvising for an eight-yard gain up to the 38-yard line, brought down by Mike James. And James and his teammates on the play. Really the focus on the defensive unit of Birmingham is the youth in the backfield. Seven of the eight DBs that you will see this evening are rookies. The man spotlighted up front, though, is number 56, Shante Peoples. Peoples, the number two sack man with five on the year, was a defensive back at Michigan, weighing 210 pounds. He's bulked himself up to 250 and likes to rush the quarterback as a member of the Birmingham Barracudas. Second and three. The handoff good for the first down. Sean Daniels, the ball carrier. And do keep in mind here in the CFL, it's three downs, not four, coach. Mike, and when you look at Jeff Garcia, he made his claim to fame at San Jose State under John Ralston. In the East-West game, he threw three touchdown passes and caught the attention of the Canadian League coaches. But uh, he's a 4-8-40 guy, but you saw in the first play, he had some escapability and was able to pick up good yards on first down. So first and 10 situation. Football spotted on the 43-yard line. Daniels in the backfield again, and he gets the football and holds ahead to the side. Now, neither of these football teams will run on frequent occasion, and we should also note that Sean Daniels is in the lineup tonight because of an injury to their starting running back, and that's Tony Stewart, the all-time leading rusher in Iowa. So Garcia not only in, but in without their main running back. Well, Mike, if you're going to run the ball in first down, you want to at least be second and four or shorter because of you, you've only got one more down as you look at John Huffnagel, the offensive coordinator, to pick up the first down. And just a game of three on the last play brings up a second and seven. From the shotgun, Garcia over the middle, wide open receiver, David Sapungis is inside Birmingham territory. Good throw by Jeff Garcia. David Sapungis is a type of receiver, a headsy type receiver that can find the hole in the zone defense. Had him last year against Baltimore, and he makes so many key catches. Here you see number 25, David Sapungis, just trying to find the hole and sitting down, let Jeff Garcia throw in the football, Jimmy Reed on the tackle. Gain of 12 on the play, good for the first down. Sapungis, one of the all-time great receivers in Calgary history. Daniels, the single back set again. He goes in the motion on the right side. A quick hit to the sideline. Reception made by Terry Vaughn, and Vaughn breaks a couple of tackles. Gets nicely inside the 35-yard line before he was finally hauled down by Tommy Orr. Terry Vaughn's 5'8", 183 out of Arizona, but he's tough to bring down. Coaches told me before the game that hardly ever does, does the first tackler bring him down. Very elusive. You know what's interesting, Mike, is these two teams played a week ago and the adjustments that coaches have to make. I think the advantage goes to Calgary because when you lose a game like that, you look at the film a little closer and they're trying to different type game plan, a little bit more two back to start the game off. An impressive drive thus far put together by Jeff Garcia, moving the football down to the 36-yard line of Birmingham. Goes up top, man tries to spring free, and it's too far for the intended receiver, number 18, Allen Pitts. Anthony Drawhorn was on the coverage. Good pressure by Mark Ledbetter, number 94. Jeff Garcia, what they're trying to do here early in the ball game is little play action fakes to try to hold this defensive line. Ledbetter was able to get through and put a put a good hit on Jeff Garcia. Spent the last two seasons playing with the Sacramento franchise, which is now the San Antonio Texans. And there's a familiar face, Jack Pardee. He's coached just about everywhere. That's the easy way to put it. Now the head coach in the first season here of CFL action in Birmingham, Alabama. Mike, you got to figure David Sapungis again. Inside receiver, number 25, trying to find a hole. There he is. Good defensive play. The pass broken up nicely by Andre Strobe. Strobe, 5'8", 177 out of Colorado State knew what you thought, and that was that the football was going towards the punches. He, he broke on the ball very well, Andre Strode. Uh, he's 5'8", 197, and sets up the field goal attempt here for Calgary. But a pretty good drive by Jeff Garcia. Gets a little bit uh, uh, a good start here for Calgary and a good drive. Now, Doug Flutie is on to hold for Mark McLaughlin, who has been just excellent. Look at those numbers. 22 of 24 on the year. This will be a 43-yard field goal attempt. He's three for three from 40 to 49, make it four for four, and McLaughlin continues to be excellent. 23 of 25 on the year, 
and Garcia drives Calgary to three points in the opening drive. ESPN 2's coverage of the Canadian Football League is brought to you by the Discover Card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. Buy the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And buy the beers. A diamond is forever. Doug Flutie still working it on the sidelines, speaking with David Sapunjus and the quarterback Jeff Garcia. And Flutie, I'll tell you what, he has brought not only some great gamemanship to the city of Calgary, but has really brought a signature of class to the whole CFL, Coach. Well, you know, when you have this ball game here at Birmingham, everybody, everyone was looking forward to Doug Flutie playing tonight. So a little bit of a disappointment for the fans. Birmingham in their inaugural season here in the Canadian Football League. Off to a pretty good start now. Keep in mind, as you notice, there was no kickoff here. You can choose to not kick off in the CFL and start your football play from the 35 yard line and that's what Matt Dunnigan in the offense of the Barracudas is doing right here. I thought I missed the kickoff. <laughs> CFL, a couple of different rules. We'll go over them throughout the evening. Matt Dunnigan, we introduced you at the beginning of the show, works from the shotgun. Dunnigan on second and ten, complete. Marcus Grant on the reception. Al Jordan got the hit. There's Dunnigan, number 16 in the middle. And the uh, man to look for is number 68 tonight. That is Roosevelt Patterson. He has not played the tackle position. He's on the right side, 68 of your screen. He has not played the tackle position since his collegiate days in Alabama. And he will be matched up against a fine pass rusher this evening in Will Johnson of the Calgary Stampeders. Gain of 18, first and 10. Dunnigan with the quick hit. It goes incomplete. And setting up the defense for Calgary. Vaughn and Jordan with Knox is a good defensive backfield. And the man I was speaking of is on the left side of the front four, number 81, Will Johnson. Last year, he led the CFL with 17 sacks. He did not play last week or the week prior due to an injury. And so this is his first matchup this year against the Birmingham Barracuda. He'll work the youngster, Patterson. Now Dunnigan double pumps, pass is complete. Marcus Grant again, the receiver. And Al Jordan is the man who forces him towards the sidelines. Mike, what they did is they put all four receivers to the front side, and then the short side receiver was Marcus Grant. When you do that in the CFL, you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one situation here against Al Jordan, number 27. Ran the out route, picked up the first down. Pretty good call by John Jenkins. Marcus Grant, number 81, number four receiver in the CFL. Six touchdowns on the year. He's averaging over 21 yards per catch. Al Dunnigan on first and ten. Goes to the other side of the field. Almost intercepted. Jason Phillips, the intended receiver on the play, and it went through the hands of Marvin Coleman. Well, Matt Dunnigan, as we said in the open, has a very strong arm. Can throw the ball from hash to hash to the, to the wide side of the field. Has a big, great quick release also. John Jenkins says he's just picking up the offense, getting better every week in the run and shoot. Well, Calgary's defense had not allowed over 300 yards passing at all until last week in a single game when Dunnigan put up those 433 yards. Second and 10. Dunnigan with the pitch to the near side. Ball carriers keep Woodside. And he will be just short of the first down marker. Little sprint uh, option to the weak side, figuring they were in man coverage. Keith Woodside, number 31, recipient. There's the option. Down the line of scrimmage by Matt Dunnigan, kicking the ball out to Keith Woodside, trying to catch him in man coverage, and uh, Birmingham's going to take a timeout and talk this one over. It's uh, setting up as a third and two, third and three situation after the carry by Woodside. All indications are Luis Dejas on to attempt the field goal and tie this football game at three apiece. Jack Pardee, well, we know that from his days in Houston, same here in Birmingham, does not run the football very often. A 37-yard field goal attempt for Zendejas, playing in his second game as a Birmingham Barracuda. And his kick is good, and we are tied at three. So Dunnigan completes a couple of passes. Zendejas comes in, and this football game is tied with 8.07 remaining in the first. 
first quarter. Put everything in perspective for you. Calgary suffered their first loss of this CFL season last week at the hands of Birmingham. They have the best record in the Northern Division at 7-1. The defending Grey Cup champion, BC Lions, number two, at 7-2. You go over to the Southern Division, and that's where all the U.S. teams are based. Baltimore was a winner earlier today up against Toronto. So they moved to 7-3. Birmingham, a game less played, hoping to move to 6-3 tonight with the victory. Now, keep in mind one thing. You see less teams in the Southern Division. The number five seed in the North, when the playoffs come, will move to the Southern Division as they approach the Grey Cup to be played this year in Regina, Saskatchewan. Mike, go back to this, the decision that the uh, Birmingham team made not to receive the kickoff. I would think in this game you'd want to receive the kickoffs because special teams is such a big factor with the wide field that I would want the ball on the kickoff. I'd want to try to return the kickoff. Then Dayhawks. It will be taken at the 19-yard line by Marvin Coleman. Coleman a good return last time, and now he does it again outside the 40-yard line, still on his feet, finally hauled down at the 43. 25-yard return for Marvin Coleman. There's the numbers for Jeff Garcia, 2 of 4, 28 yards in his first drive that resulted in the McLaughlin field goal of 43 yards. Good field position for Garcia to start from. First and ten, football spotted on the 44-yard line of the Stampeders. And off around the outside, ball carrier against Sean Daniels out of Bowling Green. And Tommy Orr gets the stop. Excuse me, Mike. Looks like what is what uh, Calgary is trying to do on first down because Birmingham is widening the defensive end so wide. To rush the passer they're going to try to keep them at home and run the football on first down to try to make them come in a little bit as you look at john huffnagel former penn stater the offensive coordinator eight of five on the run by daniels and it'll bring up the second and five from the shotgun flag on the play showing his versatility again garcia throws it up complete reception made by peewee smith at the 27 yard line Mark Ledbetter had pressure on the quarterback, and Garcia was able to elude the pressure and complete the 35-yard pass. We'll see if it sticks, though. 48, decline, first down. Mike, it was offside on Birmingham, but what you watch now, this is twice now Jeff Garcia has been able to escape the rush and make something happen, and that's what you want in the Canadian Football League as well as in the NFL. You like a quarterback that can escape the rush and make the big play, and that's just what Jeff Garcia was able to do with the pass to Pee Wee Smith. Well, that's something that has earned Doug Flutie a healthy amount of paychecks in this league. And a lot of yards. You got that right. He topped 30,000 in his career last week in his performance against his team. Garcia, though, in charge, goes over the middle, Sapunjus gets in to the end zone. Touchdown, Calgary, David Sapunjus. When you see an excited Jeff Garcia going to the steadiest receiver on this football team, David Sapunjus, number 25 on the post route. 26-yard touchdown reception from Jeff Garcia to the ever-reliable David Sapunches. Sapunches had two touchdowns last week uh, against these very Birmingham Barracudas, and there's Doug Flutie in again to hold as the convert attempt comes the way of the foot of Mark McLaughlin. Mark McLaughlin makes his 307th consecutive convert. And Jeff Garcia has been very, very impressive offensively. And in Calgary, the 10-3 lead. He had good zip on that ball. I mean, that was a good pass, very accurately thrown to Sapunjus. And uh, you've got to feel good if you're Calgary. The way he's starting off. There's the throw. On the post to David Sapunjus, a little bit behind him, but you see David Sapunjus being able to adjust to the football and come back and make that catch. Here's the route now. We're going to watch David Sapunjus go down, stick. Now he's running the Sapunjus post. Now watch him there. come back and make the catch. Good concentration, and then the last-minute effort to dive to get in the end zone. 
I think the most important thing in these first two drives is that that uh, Birmingham has not been able to pressure Jeff Garcia. That's what they were able to do last week, get a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, because you see Jeff Garcia's numbers, four out of six, without very little pressure from Shante Peoples, Mark, and the uh, Angelo Snipes. Now, this time as McLaughlin gets set to kick off, there will be a special teams play coming the way of Birmingham. They took the football on the 35 last time. Eddie Britton, number one. And Matt Cody, number five, back deep to receive. Taken by Cody at the 14-yard line. Cody gets some blocks over the far side of the football field, returns it up to the 40. ESPN's coverage of college football kicks off Thursday at 7.30 with the Russell Athletic Weekend Kickoff Show. We'll follow that with the number two team in the nation, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, led by senior quarterback Tommy Frazier, taking on Oklahoma State. Mike Gottfried will be there with Mike Patrick to bring you all the action. It begins at 7.56 Eastern Time on ESPN. Well, I, thought I have a hard time seeing Nebraska number two. I mean, they won it all, and I think they should come back as the number one team until somebody unseats them. Dunnigan goes to the far sidelines. Eddie Britton makes the reception. Now, Britton one week ago had just three catches. One of those was for the game-winning touchdown, though, with under 10 seconds remaining in the game. The story here, Coach, last year, Eddie Britton was released by the Stampeders prior to the opener. And you know through your years of football that a guy who's released by a certain coach wants to come back and do something against him in the future. Yeah, I was released myself, so <laughs> I wouldn't know the feeling, you, partner. <laughs> Now they run the football, uh, get it to Keith Woodside, and Woodside goes across. So there's two rushes already for Birmingham. They average only seven rushes a game. Marvin Pope on the stop defensively. Trying to slow down the rush. You see John Jenkins, former University of Houston head coach. He has brought the run and shoot to the Canadian Football League. Has the extra receiver with the 12th man. And what you try to do with the run and shoot is you try to stretch both vertically and horizontally, horizontally in this football field and the defense. But I think what the problem John is having here early in this ball game is trying to get a read on this Calgary defense because Calgary's moving around a lot more than they did last week. They're disguising their coverages, trying to give Matt Dunnigan a little bit more pressure and a little bit more time to try to make a decision. Woodside able to gain the first down yardage. Jenkins also brought over some of his own. Donald Moffitt, number 19. Jason Phillips, number 20. Marcus Grant, number 81. All played collegiately at the wide receiver position at the University of Houston. From the shotgun, Dunnigan rolls to the near side. Has good coverage until finally it breaks down. And Will Johnson, the man we spoke of earlier, the sack master, gets to the Birmingham quarterback. A loss of seven yards on the play. Interesting thing is you look at this defense, Greg Knox, number eight, the, the safety, is lining up in different areas so to give Matt Dunnigan some different reads so he cannot tell whether it's going to be zone or man-to-man -man coverage. And then just at the last minute, he'll bail out and get back into where the coverage that he wants to be in. Johnson's sixth back of the year, working at second and 17. Broken up defensively, Al Jordan got a hand on the football, and that'll bring up a punting situation for the homestanding Barracudas. I still think the advantage goes to the team that loses, and, I, and as this game is starting to unfold a little bit, even though it's only the first quarter, it looks to me like Calgary has a little bit more to prove, a little sharper in what they're doing. They're, they've gained some knowledge in the game last week. They're doing some different things with Greg Knox to safety, and they may have Matt Dunnigan a little bit confused. Marvin Coleman back deep to receive the first punt of the football game. It'll come off the foot of Scott Player, number 12, out of Florida State. One of the many rookies here on the Birmingham roster. Player draws it toward the near sideline. Coleman will play it out of bounds at the 21-yard line, a 44-yard kick. First punt of the contest, and so far, Calgary offensively run by Jeff Garcia. has been impressive. They lead Tunnigan and his teammates by seven. The man in the background with the glasses on right there is Wally Buono, the head coach of the Calgary Stampeders. And in the decade of the 90s, he has the most regular season wins. And look at the impressive records put up under Calgary's head coach Wally Buono the last two years at 15 and 3. Great Cup winners after a regular season record of 13 and 5 in 1992. 
and indeed you have to call what happened in the Western Finals one year ago an upset as the BC Lions Darren Flutie was able to get a last second reception to give the Lions the victory over the Calgary Stampeders and Big Brother Doug and Calgary starting off 7-0 this year losing to Birmingham but wondering as you get a good look at the offensive unit how long they will be without their quarterback Doug Flutie if you joined us late Flutie with a tear in the elbow of his throwing arm he is not in the lineup this evening as far as the quarterback position he has been on the hold for Mark Block when the place kicker there was a holding penalty after the punt so back in there deep in their own end Kiwi Smith trying to get Jeff Garcia out of trouble it goes incomplete Angelo Snipes is a defensive lineman that Calgary has to control. Now watch the running back, number 34, Sean Daniels. He's going to pick up Snipes, but he misses him. Now they're trying to help Bruce Beaton, the left tackle, because Bruce Beaton had some trouble with Angelo Snipes last week. So they're going to try to give him some help with the back, and sometimes Jamie Crysdale, the center, will come out double on Angelo Snipes. Yard line of Calgary. Garcia works at second and ten. Dumps it off to the far side. Terry Vaughn on the reception, and Vaughn able to gain three, maybe four yards at best. Fernando Thomas was right there defensively, along with Mike James. Big mistake by Terry Vaughn because they had the screen set up, but he had to come back to the football and come inside. He had no chance to get outside with Fernando Thomas outside, so a mistake by Terry Vaughn causes the punt. Tony Martino to punt for the first time. The rookie out of uh, Arizona, pardon me, Eddie Britton out of Central State. Number one, back deep to receive. Special teams such a big part of the Canadian game because of the wide field. There's only 37 players on a roster. Defensive players got to con continue to stay in the game and special teams. A lot of big plays. Britton is set at about the midfield line. Kick forces him back to the 49. He fields it there. A flag on the play, and then another flag. I think we're going to have a hit from behind, but Britain has plenty of field to which to work. Only Martino to beat. Britain's still on his feet, brought down at the 14-yard line. Great return by Eddie Britton. A 50-yard return. Finally, Steve Madison brought him down and avoided the touchdown. I think the first flag we're going to see in the Canadian Football League, Coach, you have to give the receiver of a punt a five-yard cushion. I think they invaded that five-yard space. And then the hit from behind as the second flag came a moment later. No fair catches in the CFL, but you do have to give that five-yard cushion. No yard. Calgary number 14. Illegal block. Birmingham. First down. Here's the cushion, Eddie Britton. Now there's the block, but now he's able to get outside to get to the picket fence. You're going to see a real nice block. Now he just had to beat the punter, Martino, and he was able to stop it. Nonetheless, because of the hit from behind, a great return nullified. And now the pass complete to Ted Long, number 86, out of Oklahoma. He is brought down by Anthony McClanahan, a gain of 16 yards on the play. Ted Long's an interesting story out of Oklahoma. He had only 38 catches in his, in his entire career at Oklahoma, so he's going to see a lot of catches here for the Birmingham offense in the run and shoot. He's a former high school running back. Nine catches for 92 yards last week uh, against Calgary was his best outing of the year. And Matt Dunnigan, uh, the quarterback out of Louisiana Tech in his 13th season. And he's back in the South where he's from, born in Dallas. And so I think he's enjoying playing and prolonging his CFL career in Birmingham. I think his wife's from Birmingham, and that had to really play a big decision in, in him coming to Birmingham. Uh, they decided right away, Jack Pardee and John Jenkins, that he was their quarterback. He's the guy they wanted to get. Arthur Williams, the owner, was able to do this, and uh, he's their franchise player here. Now the player on the field injured is Dondre Owens out of Howard University, first-year player. And he was nailed by Marcus Grant on the play. Grant number 81. And 
And then Long trying to gain a couple extra yards at the end. And now, thankfully, Dondre Owens is up and walking off the field under his own power. 10-3 our score, still in the first quarter, 232 remaining. Jeff Garcia in place of Doug Flutie has been impressive thus far. Mike Goldberg, Mike Godfrey, ESPN2 coverage of the CFL continuing all the way through the playoffs in the Grey Cup from Regina, Saskatchewan, home of the Rough Riders. Mike, you see a, maybe see a blitz here. Greg Knox, the safety, number eight, is up tight. Giving Matt Dunnigan a look. You see now they have Matt Dunnigan a little bit confused where he's going to check off to the alignment of Greg Knox. Knox in his fourth year out of Toronto. Dunnigan out of the shotgun. Dunnigan able to dump it off. Complete to Donald Moffitt. And Moffitt works it inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Again, it's seven on the play. Knox, the man we spoke of, number eight, makes the stop. They're showing a lot of different coverages with Greg Knox. He's usually the center fielder in the, as a free safety playing in the middle of the football field. They're moving him all over to try to confuse Matt Dunnigan. Second and three, Keith Woodside. The man who gets the majority of the rushes for this football team checks in. He's on the right side of Dunnigan. Springs himself. Now they go over the middle through the hands of Matt Cody and incomplete. Matt Cody was open. He just did not get his eyes back to Matt Dunnigan and was not able to pick up the football. Ball was thrown right on the money. Matt Cody should have made that catch. Gerald Vaughn had the football go through his hands, too, looking for the interception. And Dunnigan will come away empty of the end zone. And Zendejas in to attempt his second field goal of the contest. That's that strong arm of Matt Dunnigan. He has a cannon for an for a arm throwing the football. 34-yard field goal attempt. The first one off the foot of Zendejas from 45 yards. And the only points Birmingham has put up offensively here in the first quarter. <laughs> 42 yarder by Zendejas is up. And it is good. So Luis Zendejas, that's the reason they signed him. Two for two on the night. And Calgary's lead cut to four. 10 6 the score with 118 remaining in the first quarter. We're talking CFL, and on Monday we talk the NFL. NFL Prime Monday kicks off this Monday night at 7.30 Eastern time with the season preview. Join Mike Tirico, Joe Theismann, and the newcomer Sterling Sharp for 90 minutes of what we can expect this season in the National Football League. Prime Monday, Monday night at 7.30 on ESPN. It's all ready to get going. College football got started this afternoon, and what a comeback by the freshmen and the Michigan Wolverines get the victory in Ann Arbor, 18-17 over Virginia. Oh, Virginia blew the 17-point lead, and uh, Michigan with a new quarterback starting. They have Illinois next week. That'll be a tough game for them at the Illini. Simeon Rice, the great linebacker, loves to rush the quarterback, and he returns on a defensive unit of Lou Teppers, which last year was just outstanding. And they may have a better linebacker than Simeon Rice and Kevin Hardy. Now, they're both of those guys, now, not, there's not many teams that have two good linebackers like they do. Marvin Coleman and Pee Wee Smith back deep to receive for Calgary. As the Stampeders lead 10-6. Fielded at the 16-yard line by Pee Wee Smith. Smith gets outside the 30. Flag on the play as Smith finally brought down at about the 37-yard line. Reggie Marable makes the special teams play. A return of 21 yards. And Garcia's numbers, 5 of 8, 92 yards, a touchdown, and no interceptions thus far. Number 88 is Vince Danielson, out of British Columbia. And the holding violation will move the football back, and it will be spotted at the 20-yard line of the Sam Peters. Garcia had the benefit of great field position when he put up the opening field goal and the touchdown pass to Sapunches. Backed off to the 20, working first down in traffic, complete to Sapunches. Sapunches out past the 35, breaks a couple of tackles. Finally, he's hauled down at the 42-yard line by Jimmy Reid, a gain of 22 yards on the play by David Sapunches. Well, it's a good call by John Huffnagel because what you want to do for Jeff Garcia is slow the pass rush down and make sure you've got Angelo Snipes 
controlled. Now here's Angelo Snipes. He's going to play action pass. You got beaten number 64 coming back. Now you got Dax picking him up. You've got some help from your other guard. And uh, now here's the fake. Jeff Garcia just sits back in there, finds Davis Sapungis in the middle of the field for the big game. From the 41 yard line. Garcia on a quick hit to the near side to Terry Vaughn. Vaughn breaks the tackle and he gets near another Calgary first down. His final seconds of the first quarter tick away. Mike James makes the stop. Terry Vaughn the reception. And Calgary without Doug Flutie. After one quarter of play, leads the football game here at Legion Field. 10-6. Garcia thus far has been impressive. Jeff Garcia, the quarterback tonight, playing for the injured Doug Flutie. The first ever to be named most outstanding player in the CFL in the past four years. But Garcia, 7 of 10, 124 yards in Dunnigan. 5 of 10 for 62 yards in the first quarter. My bad, I thought we were going to the other one. I thought we were going to the Doug uh, Flutie great games. Sean Daniels, the single back. Now we'll work over to the right side from the 51-yard line of Calgary. Daniels, the ball carrier. It's a good gain of about five yards on the play out to the 55-yard line. Angelo Snipes, the ball carrier. Well, Coach, you run the football, and you talked about it earlier on first down in the CFL, and there's a ton more pressure. You can't go 4-4 four, four, and then 2 in running plays because you've only got three plays. Mike, good point, but they're sending a message to the Birmingham defense because they're taking Snipes and Shante Peoples so wide that they're going to try to rush Jeff Garcia that they're just trying to keep that defense honest with the run in the short passing game. And the experienced part of the Birmingham defensive unit is the front four. Peoples 56 on the near side. Garcia avoids him, goes the way of big Allen Pitts, and Pitts makes the reception, forced out of bounds at the 31-yard line, running through the dasher boards, but big Allen Pitts is okay out of Cal State Fullerton, a gain of 26 yards on the play. Everything that they are doing so far, Calgary on offense, is designed to help Jeff Garcia. Here's another play-action pass, and watch what happens to Shantae Peoples. He's blocked by Sean Daniels. Now let's go to the other side, Angelo Snipes. He's doubled, bumped. The center gets a piece of him, Bobby Pandelis gets over to help block him so you've got people blocking those two outside rushers and controlling them so that they cannot get to Jeff Garcia pretty good game plan here early Barnes, the punches and Pitts all on the right side of the football field and a flag on the play Sean Daniels the ball carrier Peoples makes the tackle after a gain of about three or four and what you try to do too, Mike is give them a lot of look so Shante Peoples and Angelo Snipes never really know where it's going to come at them they're doing a good job of controlling these two outside people. Matt Clisby out of the game. Anthony Drawhorn checks back in. And a good look at Shante Peoples. We talked about him earlier. Has gained about 40 yards. Gone from a DB to a DE. He's ate himself into the defensive line. <laughs> now you're in a pretty good situation because you've got second and four. Second and five. Should be first down. First and five. Four boards wrong. And down the field, you can see the yard marker. Deep first down. And working from just outside the 25-yard line in the shotgun, Garcia. And the flag goes off as too much time taken to get that play call. Mike, you mentioned earlier, not only are they without Doug Flutie, but Tony Stewart. They're fine running back, so they're... Time count violation. Calgary number seven. Still first down. So that five they had there, they lost... Now it's first and ten again. But without Tony Stewart and Doug Flutie, uh, they're getting a lot of good offense in this first half. Ollie Buono has the puzzled look on his face, and uh, justifiably so, as he's not sure in the future of Flutie. A rib injury to Tony Stewart, the all-time leading rusher at Iowa in his fine, impressive collegiate career as a member of the Hawkeyes. Very highly recruited player out of New Jersey, Tony Stewart. Chose Iowa. Had a good career. In his sophomore year. Rushed for over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns. And the, official, the officiating crew gets things sorted out. And we'll go what, back to first and ten, Coach. What did that mean, though, when he hit his wrist there? Yeah, something on his hand. Uh, see? <laughs> From the shotgun, Garcia. 
goes inside. And again, it is Vince Danielson on reception number 88. And Jimmy Reed makes the stop. Danielson out of the University of British Columbia and a resident of Vancouver. Tried to, yard game. tried to pressure a Mike there with an outside linebacker. Mike James blitz, but the, now they're in man coverage. Jeff Garcia read it right from the start of the play. Vince Danielson was open on the curl route with another first down. Garcia was looking just to punch us a lot earlier. Now he's kind of spreading the wealth, using all his wide receivers. So he'll go back to Sapunjis or Pitts right here. Under pressure, incomplete. Good pressure applied on the play by Angelo Snipes and Shante Peoples. Well, we talked about the outside rushers. You've got to control them. And so far, until this play, they've controlled them. Angelo Snipes out of West Georgia College. See how wide they are? The wide alignment by the two outside defensive ends. Just able to knock Bruce Beaton right back into Jeff Garcia for the sack. Brings up a second and ten. Football spotted on the 15-yard line of Birmingham. Vaughn and Danielson to the near side of the football field. Garcia looks end zone. Allen Pitts not tall enough. Good coverage on the play. Three defensive backs of Birmingham were draped on big number 18, Allen Pitts. Andre Strode was right there, number four. Anthony Drawhorn, number seven, right on Allen Pitts. Allen Pitts going to break down, run the post. We welcome you back to Legion Field here in Birmingham. Mike Goldberg, Mike Godfrey. Calgary leads 13 to 6. You get a look at number 16, Matt Dunnigan. And he moved himself up a notch in the record books with a 433-yard performance one week ago. The number two all-time passer in the Canadian Football League. And for many years, he starred as the quarterback of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and also the Toronto Argonauts. He's made a couple of trips to the Grey Cup and has not made a trip to the sideline after an interception in quite some time. 140 consecutive pass attempts since his last interception. Keith Woodside in the backfield. Dunnigan moves to the shotgun position. The ball taken at the 35-yard line after the field goal by McLaughlin. Intended receiver Woodside fell to the field and thus the incompletion. What you try to do in the run and shoot, and Keith Woodside knows uh, he, he was going to be open if he just could have avoided the blitz of the outside linebacker, Alondra Johnson. But when you have a situation where they're playing a lot of man coverage, they're going to try to get Keith Woodside lined up versus a linebacker, and that's a mismatch in, in Birmingham's favor. Second and ten. Going over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver as Kenton Leonard defensively was there on Ted Long. And, you, and just like that, you're punting again. So two plays and you're punting the football and your defense is back on the field. That's why I say conditioning is such a big part of the Canadian Football League games. And keep in mind, up in the northern part of our world, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, temperatures have been very mild. You come down into Birmingham, Alabama, you're the Calgary Stampeders, and you say, whoa, wait a second here. It's a little bit humid. We're not used to this up in the northern parts. And that's the idea Birmingham wants to do, is wear out the pass rush of the defensive linemen by getting a lot of plays off. They've been unable to do that the first half. Marvin Coleman and Pee Wee Smith back deep to receive the punt. It's going to be Coleman taking it at the 27-yard line. He retreats a bit and can't get out of any of the traffic. A 48-yard punt off the foot of Scott Player and virtually a return of a yard or two. And I think the fans in Birmingham were wishing for two things. They were hoping to see Doug Flutie, and the coaching staff was also hoping it'd be a little bit hotter and a little bit more humid tonight. They were concerned about the weather because they thought they'd get an advantage, but you're right, the fans wanted to see number 20 tonight, but they're seeing a good effort by Jeff Garcia. Yeah, no question about it. Doug Flutie has matched up against Matt Dunnigan on frequent occasion, and there have been some spectacular contests. And a lot of respect for both quarterbacks. They have it for each other. First and ten, football on the 26-yard line. Stan Peters on the offensive again under Jeff Garcia. Garcia gives to Keith Daniels, and Daniels gets a couple of yards. There's a flag on the play. Last week was the seventh meeting between the two great quarterbacks 
Matt Dunnigan and Doug Flutie as the holding goes against. And this also includes a Grey Cup, won in 1992 by Flutie and his teammates. Four wins for each team. Touchdown passes about the same. Numbers about the same. And the rushing yards, well, when these two guys get on the football field, coaches don't think about running the football very often. Matt Dunnigan said when he's watching a ball game with Doug Flutie in the game against him, sometimes he'll just drop his helmet and start cheering for Doug Flutie because he has so much respect for him. Craig Brenner was flagged for the holding on the play. Marching Calgary back a bit. Calgary has not been penalized a lot this year. And tonight they've been flagged on three occasions that I can think of in the last about 10 minutes of football play. And all meaning to Jeff Garcia working from deep in his own end. Garcia completes the pass to the far side. And in a play like that, Coach, you can see how truly big and wide this CFL field is. You have so much room for which to work in the wings. You're right, Mike, and, and there's two purposes for that rollout. Number one is to bring him a little closer to the wide receiver to the wide side of the field. And second of all, to move the pocket around. You don't always want your quarterback back seven yards behind the center. You want to move him around because you got those two outside Shante Peoples and Angelo Snipes trying to draw a beat on him. So you want to move him around so he's not always at the same place. Terry Vaughn made the catch for 10 yards, so they cut the penalty off. He brings up the second and 10. Garcia to work from the 26-yard line in the shotgun. Garcia over the middle to punches. And he was hit immediately on the play may have been just short of the first down yardage. Reggie Marable, number 30, made the tackle of Davis Apunches. Nope, they're going to say a gain of uh, 11 yards and a first down for Calgary. So far, I think the game plan of Calgary offensively has had such good mix in it that they've been able to control the rush, but also been able to get the ball spread out to different receivers. They're running the football to try to keep the defense honest. They've kind of controlled the ball game on offense. Second quarter, the touchdown in the game was from Jeff Garcia. They gave it to Punches. Garcia goes to that man again, to Punches, and he has been the busy receiver thus far. Gets out to the midfield line. Stopped by Anthony Drawhorn there, but another good gain and a first down. A gain of 13 yards on the play. What made that play again was the mobility of Jeff Garcia. He's sitting back in the pocket and then started to slide out. Here's the inside receiver, David Sapunjas, just sitting down again trying to find a hole, but what made the play was Jeff Garcia being able to move around in that pocket to get the defensive people to stop a little bit so David Sapunjas could get open. All of the 50, Sean Daniels gets a good block. A gain of about four yards on the play. Sean Brantley there defensively for Birmingham. Sean Daniels out of Bowling Green, 5'11", 237. Trying to run a draw here against the linebackers. You're going to see both linebackers come right here to try to get some pressure on Jeff Garcia. But they've got the right call here just to give to Sean Daniels. Able to pick up a couple yards. But again, trying to keep the defense honest. Garcia has hit eight of his last ten passes. He goes through the air again, complete to Sapunjas inside the 40-yard line. What a target David Sapunjas has been as Drawhorn has to pick up to him again after a gain of 15 yards on the play. There's some receivers that just have a feel for zone coverage. You see him break down, now just curl, make the catch, pick up a couple more yards, and move the sticks. David Sapunjas is not going to beat you with the long pass, but he's going to beat you controlling the football. Alan Pitts will probably beat you with the long pass for Terry Vaughn. Sixth reception of the contest for David Sapunjas, 98 yards. He has the lone touchdown. And Mike, when you're throwing all these short passes, eventually you're going to go deep. There goes Garcia, but this time it's up for grabs and in and out of the hands of Eddie Davis and Anthony Drawhorn. It's almost like those two guys avoided each other making the interception. I think Anthony Drawhorn had this interception. He was just sitting back waiting for it. Eddie Davis kind of knocked the ball away from him. But what you always tell the defensive back, go for it at its highest point. You see the mistake he waited on the ball. Should have moved to the football and tried to make the interception. Well, last week defensively, Birmingham, knowing that Flutie's arm was hurt, Really just tried to take away the short passes. There was that philosophy. Hey, Doug, if you can throw the ball and beat us deep with that bad arm, go ahead and try to do it. Garcia is healthy, don't forget. And as you alluded to, Coach, watch for Calgary to set up that long hit. And maybe an Allen Pitts here. And Pitts is such a good receiver and such a good target. 6'4", you know they're going to go to him eventually. They go on top against the punches. 
touchdown oh, counter catch. Catch. David Sapunjus, not Alan Pitts as we thought, but they go long, 40 yards for the touchdown. He works through Eddie Davis and Anthony Drawhorn for his second touchdown reception of the contest. You know, Mike, they set it up so well because David Sapunjus was just running curl routes all evening in the first half. They ran him on a takeoff, and he was able to get behind Eddie Davis, and the concentration that David Sapunjus has as a receiver is outstanding. A nice throw by Jeff Garcia. He's hot tonight. McLaughlin to come and try to make it 20 to 6. The cotton bird, as they call them in the CFL. It's still a PAT of the afternoon. Flutie handles a bad snap. McLaughlin puts it through the uprights into this 20 to 6 Calgary due to the great efforts of the quarterback Jeff Garcia and what has turned out to be his favorite receiver tonight, David Sapunjas. Garcia finds the end zone again. ESPN Net Sports. A great opportunity really can land on your doorstep. As an independent delivery agent for the Detroit News and Detroit Free Press, you're in business for yourself with independence, flexibility, and the chance to earn up to $60,000 a year. To discover all that this opportunity delivers, just call 1-800-603-6017. Had they only sampled its precise handling, they might have named it Import Car of the Day. Had they just heard its quiet cabin, they might have named it Import Car of the Week. And had they merely felt its powerful engine, they might have named it Import Car of the Month. But they experienced all of the Nissan Maxima and named it Motor Trend's Import Car of the Year. See the sales professionals at Jeffrey Nissan to lease a 1995 Maxima GXE for $2.99 per month for 36 months for zero down. David Sapunjus in 93 was the most outstanding Canadian, the first ever Canadian to record over 100 catches in a season. He led the CFL with 103, and he leads the attack of Calgary this evening. Two touchdown receptions, seven catches, 138 yards for David Sapunjus. Like a coach on the field. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to get open. We're going to look at David Sapunjus here as Jeff Garcia rolls to the left. David Sapunjus just runs down the middle of the field. Eddie Davis didn't see him. Get, gets beat deep, and then you see the concentration of David Sapunjus bringing the ball in for the touchdown. Britton and Cody back deep to receive. It will be Cody to take it. And he has room. Cody works out outside the 40, tries to break the tackle there, and a good return out to the 42-yard line. Kenton Leonard on the special teams tackle for Calgary. This is a big series for Baltimore offensively. John Jenkins, I'm sure, would like to get in the end zone here before this 5.46 on the clock. And getting Matt Dunnigan back to a little bit more consistency. Garcia's numbers impressive already over 250 yards passing and two touchdowns. The youngster out of San Jose State making his first start of the night. It turns into Garcia against Dunnigan. One week ago it was Flutie against Dunnigan. A rematch of a great upset win by Birmingham up in Calgary one week ago. Dunnigan on first down. And it is incomplete. The intended receiver had stepped out of bounds. Now Birmingham's going to try to work the short side of the field where Keith Woodside and Eddie Britton trying to work Woodside against the linebacker. Birmingham only able to generate 64 yards of total offense thus far. Credit Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator, made some good adjustments in one week to give some problems to Matt Dunnigan. But John Jenkins, a very sharp football coach. He'll figure this out when he's doing Go via the ground. And the ball carrier, Ted Long, a flag on the play. Kenton Leonard was there defensively on his defensive back position in his fifth year out of Nichols State. I wonder if we could get down to the sideline reporter, Doug Flutie, and find out the weather conditions. <laughs> well, they have been expecting rain in Birmingham. It was pouring in Atlanta just 90 miles away all last night. And when the skies opened up, they opened up. And they just have here at Legion Field. Felt the wind coming in, coach, and I'm uh, no meteorologist, but I had a feeling it wasn't far away. 
I think you were close, so I mean you were you were close. You had it over in Atlanta, so it's here now. Well, I applied for all those weather jobs coming out of college, and then I couldn't get those, so I decided sports casting well, would be you're, the next you're, step. You're in a better job. There you go. Done again. Near side. Oh, big hit applied by Marvin Coleman. Coleman just drilled Jason the receivers. Phillips. Yeah, Jason Phillips, number 20. Jason wow. hadn't been hit that hard since he was at Taft Junior College and at the University of Houston. Still a gain on the play to set up a second and two for Birmingham. They go to the ground and keep Woodside. Flag on the play. Woodside stops, I believe, short of the first down yardage by Anthony McClanahan. It's going to be close. Our first holding call. Birmingham number 69 decline third down Jeff Neal is called for the holding Mike the range come down Matt Dunnigan to work third and two gonna go for it yep set up the play now there's a one yard cushion that has to be given and again, pitches it ahead, clipped up, and another flag on the play. Ted Long, again, was the ball carrier. Big Daddy Marvin Pope was in defensively. Bring something interesting this week, Mike. But the coaches in the American cities were complaining about the officiating. They felt like they favored the Canadian teams. And Dunnigan comes away empty one more time. Calgary leads by 14. What'd you get? Western Whopper. Looks good. Yeah, it's got bacon and cheddar and a tangy barbecue sauce. How tangy is it? Is it really tangy? Not super tangy. It's good. And tangy. Not too tangy. No. The flame broiled Whopper, now with cheddar cheese, hickory smoked bacon, and barbecue sauce. The Western Whopper, for a limited time at Burger King. On a scale of one to ten. Yeah. How tangy? What'd they say? I'd like to tell you about my friend Jay. Jake is music. If he's not playing, he's listening to music. He has a legendary music collection. He's got stuff from last century. Eight tracks. The best times we have are just when we sit down and pick up the guitars and play what comes to our heads. Jake's just a great friend. The Western got his backstage passes. Yes. Everybody loves him. Not too sure the neighbors do, though. When you're with a friend as good as Jake, shouldn't you have a Heineken? We welcome you back to Legion Field and happy to welcome in another college football season. The coverage on ESPN kicks off Thursday at 7.30 with the Russell Athletic Weekend Kickoff Show. And what a matchup we have. Following that, number two, Nebraska. Taking on Oklahoma State, Tommy Frazier named the starting quarterback of the Cornhuskers. Mike Gottfried will be there with Mike Patrick. We'll bring you all the action. 7.56, they kick Eastern time on ESPN. Nebraska and Oklahoma State. It'll be an excellent college football season, Mike. We're really looking forward to it. There's about five or six teams, I think, have a chance to win the national title. Nebraska's one of them. Jeff Garcia out of San Jose State has been impressive thus far. We get a good look at the Birmingham defensive player, number 56, Shante Peoples, and Angelo Snipes, two guys who like to get to the quarterback who have been held in check by this strong offensive line in the stands. First and ten, football on the 42. Sean Daniels, the ball carrier, goes around the near side and gains a couple of yards. And you speak of the offensive line of the Calgary Stan Peters coach. And going into last week's game, they had allowed just seven sacks in their first seven games of the season. They allowed three last week, but still, this is an offensive line for Wally Buono's team, as good as any in the CFL. And you credit Doug Flutie with a lot of that because he's quick getting rid of the football and he's hard to trap back there. And it looks like Jeff Garcia is the same type of quarterback. He's been able to escape a couple times tonight. Gain of five by Daniels. Sets up the second and five on the 47-yard line. Garcia from the shotgun. Under pressure. In and out of the hands of Alan Pitts. Incomplete. 
Shante Peoples with good pressure there, the former All Big Ten defensive player. Started 19 career games from Michigan. You're going to see him in the, on the right-hand side just beat the offensive tackle and get to Jeff Garcia. Now here's the route. Just couldn't hold the football. Allen Pitts, number 18. Brings up a punting situation. A Scott player. And we'll see his counterpart, Tony Martino, reach the field for the second time. Birmingham needs a big play in special teams. Something to ignite their team a little bit. Something to ignite the fans. Martino kicking to Britton and Cody. And taken at the 18-yard line by Eddie Britton. Britton trying to work outside. Breaks one tackle. Now cuts back in. Still on his feet. Scattering up to the 33-yard line. Good individual effort. Steve Matson finally brings him down after a 43-yard kick and return of 17 yards for Eddie Britton. 249 remains in the half. Calgary leads 20 to 6. This free video shows you how both Art Miller, he gets things done. He's worked with police to fight crime in our neighborhoods. He wants to put more cops on the beat. Art Miller led the fight in Lansing to lower our taxes and help seniors stay in their homes. And now he'll do even more. People come before politics. And we're going to give government back to you, the people of the city of Warren. Art Miller. He gets things done. in the Canadian Football League. 249 remaining in the second quarter. Matt Dunnigan certainly held in check thus far by the defensive unit of the Calgary Stampeders. Just 6 of 14, 70 yards after throwing for 433 yards against this very same defensive unit last week. Mike, the big key is only 17 plays on offense for Birmingham tonight and only three rushing attempts. Now, that's not bad, but there's not any screens in this, in this offense in the first half. I know John Jenkins would like to throw some screen passes to try to slow down this rush of Calgary. Now Keith Woodside coming in had carried the ball only 23 times but had 30 receptions and I don't think he's got the football out no, of the backfield yet. Let's see if they go that way now. Dunnigan, you know, he wants to go for the big yards, dug over the middle. Completion made to Matt Cody. Jordan and his teammates make the stop after a gain of 21 yards by Matt Cody. Again, Matt Dunnigan, the strength of his arm, he's able to roll to the left and throw the curl to Matt Cody back against the green to the right side for a big game. Cody, the rookie, out of Memphis. Released at the end of last year by Winnipeg. A good game last week. 93 yards reception and a touchdown. Now first and 10 again, Dunnigan. Rolls away from the pressure. He'll stay on his feet. Sliding in for a first down. Well, you always, as a coach, you want him to get out of sight, out of bounds. Matt Dunnigan decided to stay in bounds and get down. McClanahan had the pressure on him. A 12-yard gain, and the clock will stop after the gaining of the first down yardage while they adjust the chains. Dunnigan from the shotgun for ball spotted at the 42. Lots of time for Matt Dunnigan, incomplete. Under through his intended receiver, Marcus Grant, number 81, out of Houston. They brought this, the safety, DeAndre Owens, number 14, to try to pressure Matt Dunnigan a little bit. The one thing you see different in this game plan tonight by Calgary is a lot of different blitzes, a lot of different stunts. Here's Marcus Grant, number 81, just not able to bring in the football. and 10 now for Dunnigan. Set up again in the pocket, knocked down in front. The defensive play made by big number 96, Shreko Zizakovic. Again, a change up on defense by Frank Spaziani with another good call. Here's the pressure again. Ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. It looked like 
Marcus Grant was going to be open down the field. He just didn't have time to get him the football. The safety Greg Knox was in the seat of Matt Dunnigan. The safety blitz was on, and that will bring up a punting situation for Birmingham on a drive that you said was very important as they worked their way to the locker room. Birmingham is just not able to, to try to draw a bead on what Calgary's doing on defense, and halftime adjustments are going to be a very good key. Player just gets the kickoff, and there is the roughing the kicker indication flag on the play. The return will probably not matter, because I have a feeling Birmingham's going to keep the football. Well, that, I believe that's Mark Pierce that went in on the punt, and uh, he, he didn't go in to block the punt. That's the first mistake he made. Second thing is you always try to take the ball off the punter's foot, and he's too high on this thing, and he just runs into Scott Player. Let's see if it is Mark Pierce, number 95. There's the kick. As you see, his hands are not down. He's got his hands way up in the air, and then he hits the foot. It is Mark Pierce. He did not come in with the right technique to take the ball off the kicker's foot. And you talk about a big break now. Circle this one for Birmingham. Jack, Jack Pardee. Yeah, Jack Pardee a bit frustrated to see his offense being stifled. They'll get a chance to work it with plenty of time on the clock, Coach. 155 remaining in the half. 20 to 6, Calgary with the lead. Football spotted on the 32-yard line of the San Peter. Dunnigan checks off, completes the pass to Ted Long. Mike, here's where the big end zones help, too. If you notice the end zones in the Canadian Football League, they're a lot bigger than the end zones in the National Football League or college football over here. And the advantage when you get inside the 30-yard line is that you've got a lot of room to throw the football. Zarekko Zizakovic, the man who knocked down the pass a moment ago on one knee down on the football field. Zizakovic out of Ohio State in Western Ontario. He's a big guy, Coach, 6'5", 260. His brother, Lubo, was just traded, though. Brother Lubo, 6'8", the tallest man in the Canadian Football League. It's Frank Spaziani with a towel around him. He used to be at University of Virginia with George Welsh. He's had an excellent game plan here in the first half. Probably upset with Mark Pierce on that punt. John Jenkins trying to match him on the other sideline. Eight of three on the last play, second and seven, Dunnigan. Trying to improvise, rolls one way, cuts back the other. Reception made by Keith Woodside, and he gets the first down yardage. Oh, uh, it's a nice call by John Jenkins. Brought Keith Woodside around like it was going to be that shovel draw again. You're going to watch this play. Matt Dunnigan's going to get the snap. Now here comes Woodside around. Now he rolls to the left. Now it's back to Keith Woodside. A lot of misdirection in there. The ball to Keith Woodside and then good yardage after the catch to keep this drive alive. Marvin Pope finally caught up to him, but not until the first down yardage and a gain of 10. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. Dunnigan over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, number 86, Ted Long. McClanahan on the coverage along with Don Ray. Well, it's a big play for Birmingham right here with 116 on the clock. They need to score. You see 
longer plays and they're long like that, you just give a number to Matt Dunnigan. He can read it off his wrist and make the call. Birmingham and Dunnigan works that quick offense. We won't call it really a no huddle. It reminds me of what Cincinnati did under Sam Weiss. They'll, they'll take their time and walk up to the line, but they'll never get into a real huddle position. They hurry up the offense, but it's not truly a no huddle, huh, Coach? I think they used the term muddle huddle back <laughs> back at uh, Cincinnati. And I think they scrapped the muddle huddle. And, uh, of course, Sam's now down at Tampa Bay trying to get that franchise going. They came out of a great preseason, one of the best in the history of the franchise in Tampa Bay. How about the Eagles? Philadelphia Eagles. We got Todd Hallam here. His father works for him. He said they're going to the Super Bowl. And you said? I don't think so. <laughs> Sports Smash and Reese Davis coming up at the half. Along with our analysis of what we've seen in the first 30 minutes here at Legion Field. And what a shame for the Cincinnati Bengals to see Kajana Carter, the great talent out of Penn State, out for the year. And David Klingler got hurt. Uh, Steve Wilkinson broke a, a finger the other night. So they, they Steve Tovar has been hurt. They've had their share of injuries. David's little brother, Jimmy Klingler, the backup quarterback to Matt Dunnigan here in Birmingham. Second and 10 from the 19-yard line. Dunnigan handles the bat snap, goes over the middle, incomplete. Intended receiver was number 81, Marcus Grant, but the pass was well short. They're going to take the three points here. They're going to try the field goal with Lewis and Dale. Tell you what, Dunnigan has run up some numbers this football season. He's put up some points on the board, and this is not a very typical Birmingham offensive performance. You know, it's not, but credit Calgary and their defensive plan because I think they have him a little bit confused here in the first half. The advantage, again, like we talked about earlier, when you play a team a week ago and you lose, you make some more adjustments than the team that wins. Zendaya Haas to attempt the 28 yarder. He's two for two on the night. Dejas is kicked, the driver is up, and now he is three for three. 20 to nine, our score. You know, you've credited the Calgary defense, and the one thing that has been overshadowed the last couple of years since the arrival of Doug Flutie up in Calgary is the fact that you do it on both sides of the football. When you look at guys like Alondra Johnson and Marvin Pope, just to mention a few, and you've had a good defensive unit for the Stampeders for quite some years. Well, consistency is what you want. You want a team that can play on both sides of the ball. Even with the great Doug Flutie, you still got to be able to stop people. And Frank Spaziani, the last couple of years, has put a good, strong defensive plan in here with Calgary. He would have liked that they got into that clubhouse without that three points. So on that field, or again, that roughing the kicker on that punt will be something they'll talk about at halftime also. And Garcia with still plenty of time for which to work. One minute and five seconds. Surprisingly, he takes the easy one over the middle to Davids to punches. You know, you continue the talk of the defense of the Calgary Stampeders. In the first seven games, they have allowed just 132 points, Coach. 18 points a game their opponents had scored on them, and that's not a lot of points in CFL style. No, especially when you look at the rules the way they are, they really are for the offense. And just like in this last three minutes that we've had, this is an eternity of time on offense and against the defense. So, uh... You've got to play pretty good defense to shut people down in this league. Offense to focus right now for Garcia. Number one in the league coming in, averaging 37 points per game under Flutie and Garcia. Just as impressive thus far, 15 of 22, 266 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and no interceptions. I think the key is the last one there, Mike. When you go bring a quarterback in for the first time and the his first game where he's the starter and he has not made many mistakes tonight and he has not thrown an interception. He brought his team back from a 10-point deficit last week at the Fan Stadium before the heroics performed by Matt Dunnigan. Throws behind Allen Pitts. He's able to adjust and make the reception. They spread you out so much on this field that you get some one-on-one -on -one situations and there Allen Pitts was able to use his 6-4 frame to block out the defensive back and make that catch in the curl and keep the chains moving. It's just a couple of receptions here in the first half. We should note he came in 88 yards shy of becoming the all-time leading receiver in Calgary history. So we'll look for that potentially to happen in the second half for number 18, Allen Pitts. I'd say it's a good bet. He'll break that tonight. Well, he's working on it with that reception. Uh, gain of about 15 on the play. Eddie Davis makes the stop on Pitts. Allen Pitts, number 18, is going to run a post route. Now he just ran a curl. Little move inside, 
Now against Eddie Davis, who's 5'10". So you got a 6'4 receiver going against the 5'10", Eddie Davis. One on one. The favorite is Alan Pitts. He's got 50 of the 88 thus far. The top receiver in the CFL. Receptions now in 79 straight games. So punches on one knee, makes the catch. And he gets about eight yards on the first down play. Mike James with the defensive play. Very patient drive by Calgary. John Huffnagel with the play sheet, making the calls, but it's a very patient drive with 20 seconds on the clock. They're going to try to get points on here. Maybe try to go to the end zone once or twice here before trying to settle for a field goal. Second and two, first on the line. And gaining the first down yardage was Sean Daniels. Mike James again makes the stop. James out of Mississippi State. Daniels, as coach mentioned earlier, on the seventh CFL season out of Bowling Green. Played for the Falcons. Probably got one shot here, maybe two at the most, Mike, to try to get Pitts down the field or Terry Vaughn to try to get him in the end zone one time. Lock running. Garcia towards the end zone, but not far enough. The punches, did he get the timeout called before the end of play? We'll find out. Well, the scoreboard clock shows no time. And that is indeed the call. So Punches made the reception at the 15, had to go to the secondary receiver. And Wally Buono's team dodges a bullet late as Birmingham able to just come away with the field goal. And Calgary lades after one half of play, 20 to 9. Don't forget, we check in with the sports smash and Reese Davis after this. Jeff Garcia, impressive in the first half. Back at Calgary, and the youngster Jeff Garcia has come in and done a job. Well, the story's been Doug Flutie and Matt Dunnigan, but Jeff Garcia is the guy who's performing. He's thrown two excellent touchdown passes in this ball game to really uh, help this ball club get the lead. Garcia coming in for Flutie and making his first ever CFL start this evening out of San Jose State. And I'll tell you what, this kid has shown great poise and also gone to receivers who have been very effective in the past for Doug Flutie. You're going to see Jeff Garcia's presence in the pocket. He's excited. This is his first touchdown pass here. He rolls out to the left and hit David Sapunjas down the middle for the second touchdown. But again, credit the offensive line and the protection and the game plan of John Huffnagel in the first half. 19 of 26, 312 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions for Jeff Garcia. Now, last week in the football game against these Birmingham Barracudas, Doug Flutie really spread the wealth around, Coach. Looked to a lot of different receivers. Tonight, though, Jeff Garcia has picked out a favorite, and he is number 25, David Sapunches. Ten receptions in the first half of play. Well, if you're going to pick one out, pick one out that knows how to run routes and <laughs> catch the football, and David Sapunches does that. He can catch the football, and also a very heady player. We talked about earlier, he's like a coach on the field. He can find the soft spot in the zone, and he can run away from man coverage. He's made some excellent catches. And Sapunjus, number 25. And there's Matt Dunnigan, the highest paid player in the Canadian Football League. He says he needs another three good years to pass Ron Lancaster as the all-time leading quarterback passer in Canadian Football League history. He signed a three-year guaranteed deal with the Kudas, but has been frustrated thus far by the Calgary defensive unit. Just 9 of 21 for just over 104 yards, and yet to find the end zone, three field goals by Luis Zendejas, the only scoring for the Barracudas in the first half. I think, Mike, you'll see some adjustments by John Jenkins and Jack Pardee here in the second half. Now, they've got a little bit of a vision of what Calgary's doing on defense, so now the adjustments become uh, paramount to move this football. Calgary has played just three different opponents in the last six weeks. This is the second game against Birmingham, and they had back-to-backs with Hamilton and also Winnipeg. They'll have the next 10 days off. The Barracudas not so fortunate. Barracudas will play next Friday at Ottawa, a game you'll see here on ESPN2. Matt Cody and Eddie Britton back deep to receive the kickoff the foot of Mark McLaughlin. And we are ready to get the second half started here at legendary Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. They call it the football capital of the South. Britain at the 22-yard line after the short kick. Britain scampers towards the sideline, forced out of bounds at about the 40. And this is how the numbers looked in the first half. And the passing yards, the great difference. As a matter of fact, total yardage, really what virtually a big difference for Calgary and Birmingham. Four penalties called, and the time of possession almost doubled for the Stampeders as they lead by 11. 
That's the key. 1940 on the time of possession by Calgary. 10-20 for Birmingham. And only 15 yards rushing. But when you look at Calgary, they only have 39 yards rushing. So, but they're controlling the ball with the curl passes and moving the sticks with David Sapungis. Marcus Grant. Seen the football only a couple of times. Big game last week. goes to the far sideline, completes the pass to Eddie Britton, number one. And Britton gains just a couple of yards on the play. Stu Laird with the pressure on Matt Dunnigan, but Eddie Britton did a smart thing. He was able to come back to the football to help Matt Dunnigan. He's in trouble. Here's Eddie Britton, number one, running a curl route. Now he sees Matt Dunnigan in trouble. He sees him come back to the football. Smart move there. Picks up yardage, causes the, the giving him an alternative to get the football to him. Second and seven. Dunnigan trying to go up top. Good defensive coverage on the play. Gerald Vaughn, number 38, out of Ole Miss, running stride for stride with the receiver. Matt Cody, number five, and he's able to hit the ball with his right hand, knock it away from Matt Cody and force the punt. Gerald Vaughn in his third CFL season. Forces another punt for the Birmingham Barracudas. Ewe e. Smith, number 86, and Marvin Coleman, back deep 3C. They kick off the foot of Scott Flair. Taken by Smith at the 31, and he'll get just a couple of yards, about eight on the return, a 34-yard kick. Mike David Sapun just played such a big part in the first half, number 25. Excellent receiver. He goes seen on the post route, able to come back across his body, make the catch for the touchdown. Here's another touchdown pass where he beats the safety, Eddie Davis. Now here's an important part. Didn't help because of the time ran out, but watch him. Smart receiver, calling timeout just before the half, trying to get the clock stopped, but was not able to. But smart and in the game, Mike, knows what's going on. Seven receptions, 75 yards, two touchdowns. Last week, he has bettered those numbers tonight in just the first half. Garcia to use his feet. Scrambles up, gains about eight yards on the play. Jimmy Reed chased him down. That play was a bust from the start. Jamie Crysdale to center on the shotgun because they want to get Jeff Garcia back. Watch the snap ball. Real low snap. Throws Jeff Garcia off just enough. Now he decides to run. Come out of the pocket. Jimmy Reed, number 39, is going to make the tackle. But that play started uh, with a bust. Good job done by Garcia to pick up seven yards on the play. Set up the second and three. Football spotted at the 45-yard line of the stamps. They go to the ground. And Craig Brenner was right there with the ball carry, and Shante Peoples was there to meet him. Now, if it's real short here, the uh, Canadian teams like the quarterback sneak because the two-yard rule, everybody has to be off the line of scrimmage. To see how close it is, whether they want to try the quarterback sneak with Jeff Garcia. Yeah, third and one is almost a virtual go-for situation in the Canadian Football League. I think what they're going to ask for is a measurement first to just see how far they have. If you joined us late, an upset last week when these two teams met, Birmingham winning 31-28. No measurement, they'll go right into the play on third and two. Juan O is going to go for it. And it's quarterback Jeff Garcia. Should be a quarterback sneak, we'll see. Goes over the right side, jumps up, and appears to have the first down yardage. That's a good move by Jeff Garcia. Was able to go behind the right guard, and right tack, when leap over. Everybody else was trying to converge into the middle to try to stop the quarterback sneak. Birmingham with the win last week. Snapped a 27-game home winning streak by the Calgary Stampeders of McMahon Field in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Their last loss was in 92 against Edmonton. It was also the first loss to an American-based team by Calgary. trying to return the favor goes up top sideline complete Pee Wee Smith a good reception on the play forced out of bounds inside the 30 yard line you can't throw the football any better than Jeff Garcia just threw this football Pee Wee Smith against a kind of a rolled up corner here we're going to see the pressure first Angelo Snipes in there 
Pressure from Mike James. Now watch, the rolled up corner. Now Pee Wee Smith gets behind the corner and the ball couldn't have been thrown any better. Fernando Thomas was the rolled up corner in a big game for Calgary. 37 yards before Eddie Davis was able to force Pee Wee Smith out of bounds. And so great field position now on the 24 yard line. Mike, sometimes you like to throw the three step quick hitch or quick out, but I think what happened there was rolled up corner Pee Wee Smith made the adjustment. And Jeff Garcia read it and put the ball right on the money. Six year out of Miami. From the shotgun, Garcia from the 24 dumps it off. A little possession a reception made by Pee Wee Smith. And he was hit immediately by Jimmy Reed and Tommy Orr. Credit Tony Marciano to the offensive line coach for Calgary because last week they had some trouble with this front of Baltimore. But today's game plan, tonight's game plan has been such a game plan that we haven't called Angelo Snipes' name a lot. We haven't called Shante Peoples' name a lot. Remember I mentioned earlier, great offensive line possessed by Calgary have allowed just seven sacks in the first seven games. Second and sixth play. Garcia under pressure, and as we speak of it, there he is. It's almost like the jinx. You, you talk about it, and that's what happens sometimes. Angelo Snipes with the sack. Played, out of, played at West Georgia College. He had 12 sacks in one game in college. Number 91, Angelo Snipes with the sack. First signed with the Oakland Invaders. Played out in Oakland and uh, pretty good pass rusher. Beat Bruce Beaton, number 64. He's the number three sack man in the CFL. That was his ninth of the season and a loss of five yards. Sets up the third and 11 in the field goal attempt by Mark McLaughlin. Perfect on the night from 43 and 22. This one will come from 32. McLaughlin's kick is up. And he finally misses. McLaughlin has not missed in some time, but he misses for just the third time this season as it hits the uprights and goes awry. So the score remains 20 to 9, halfway through the third. <laughs> Summer's history. So what's on your mind? The fall. Football. That dream where I show up for school naked. My jersey number. Her phone number. Hoops. Her sister's phone number. So, what's on your body? Hyped up colors. Champ sports stuff. Stuff you can't get anywhere else. Tons of it. Heads to toe. I got Champ's number. <laughs> the best Nike, Adidas. Massimo, no fear, starter. Only at Champ Sports. Champ Sports? Champ Sports. Your mind, your body, your call. 1-800-2-BE-FIRST. Champ Sports. Get the real stuff first. Calgary comes away empty, 9.52 remaining in the third quarter. The Stampeders leading the Barracudas by a score of 20-9. to nine. And, Coach, when you get into a situation, offense is stagnant, team seems to be struggling a little bit. You try to pinpoint a certain play or a certain series that can kind of be a momentum turner, and maybe Angelo Snipes getting into the backfield, getting the first sack of the game, and Calgary coming away with nothing can be something that boosts the offensive unit of the Barracudas. I think you're so very right, Mike, because with the Angelo Snipes play, that forced a field goal attempt, and then, of course, the missed field goal, you don't move up by 14 again. Now, now the offense has to do something. Matt Dunnigan has to do something. And I think where they need to go with the football is to Keith Woodside, number 31. He's got to be more involved in this half. To see what they how they get the try to get the ball to him because he's the guy you're working against the linebacker with. Let's see if they look to number 31. This time down the field to number 81. The reception made by Marcus Grant out of Houston. 15-yard gain for Marcus Grant. Marcus Grant was played for John Jenkins at the University of Houston and he left early. Decided to come out, go into the pro football ranks, and they tried to talk him into staying. They told him he wasn't ready. He was driving a bus last year at Rapid Transit in Dallas. And he gets the football again. And he had great numbers after his junior year. He left after his junior year at Houston to Marcus Grant. 
and was not drafted. In two years, he was on the Falcons practice squad. Last year, cut by Saskatchewan and Baltimore, and indeed said, hey, I got to go raise my family. Football isn't working out right now. Well, he was driving that bus, and he saw Jack Pardee got the job here, and he called Jack Pardee. He said, I walked on for you, Houston, and made it. Let me walk on there. I'll make it there, too. And he's averaged over 20 yards reception. Handling the stack poorly was done again, and luckily, he avoids a big loss or a turnover on the play could play by Dunnigan just to make something out of a bad situation as Pope and Zizakovic were in his face. Marvin Pope out of Central State in Ohio. He played 52 games in college. He's a durable player. That forces the pun again. So again, Birmingham cannot get anything going offensively. Marvin Coleman will be back deep to receive. Single man back now. And Scott Player will punt for the fourth time. He's long on the night of 48 yards. So dynamic offensively one week ago and so stagnant thus far tonight. Players kick towards the sideline again. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be spotted right about the 24-yard line. 8.36 remains in the third. Calgary is in control. Not even close. Good coverage by Birmingham. Thus the 22-yard field goal attempt by Mark McLaughlin. And he was good from 43 to open the contest scoring. McLaughlin's chip shot is up in it. A determined look on the face of the roster of Calgary tonight. Big Allen Pitts and his teammates in control at 20 to 9 and hoping to get control early in the season our crew in the studio espn's coverage of college football kicks off thursday at 7 30 with the russell athletic weekend kickoff show and then a matchup of the number two team in the nation the nebraska cornhuskers is they are led by their senior quarterback tommy frazier and taking on the cowboys of oklahoma state mike godfrey will be there with mike patrick will bring you all the action cfa prime time on espn at 7 56 eastern and we'll have Jerry Punch with us also, the good doctor. Now, the good quarterback thus far has certainly been Jeff Garcia. Impressive numbers, 353 yards, two touchdowns. Dunnigan just 12 of 26 for 128 yards. Birmingham's got to try to force Jeff Garcia in an interception. They've got to try to change this game a little bit. Goes just the punches for his 11th catch of the contest, and Jimmy Reed is there to make the stop. Well, you can't talk enough about what David Sapunches has done. He was the top Canadian in the Grey Cup in 1992 in Calgary's win over Winnipeg at the Sky Dome. He led the CFL, as I mentioned, in 93 with 103 receptions, almost 1,500 yards. Last year, he broke his collarbone in September, missed six weeks of the season, came back and broke it again. His first injuries as a professional football player in his sixth year out of Western Ontario. Mike just so steady and so smart as a receiver. You just like those kind of guys when you're coaching to have them on the field for you because you know they're going to find a way to win for you. And find a way to garner the yardage for a first down. Then we keep Alan Pitts in mind. He's trying to break that record tonight. And... Uh, you just know he's due for a big play. They're going to set him up with Sapunjus, Sapunjus. Eventually, Allen Pitts is going to get the big catch. The record is held as we talk right now by Tom Porzani. Long time Stan Peter, offensive star. They give to Sean Daniels. He goes over the right side of the line. Mark Ledbetter meets him after a gain of three. Again, not what you'd want to try to run the football you want to get down to second and four and they're second and seven but a call to the defense that we are going to run some traps we're going to run the ball we're going to keep you honest on your pass rush more important tonight for them to keep that defense honest calgary has been an excellent fourth quarter team this football season I'll tell you about that as time continues garcia Goes to the man who has been the most frequently named player in tonight's contest, the punches. He lost the football, though. Let's see if they'll call it a turnover. I don't know if he ever had this ball, though. He was stretched out. Jimmy Reed, number 39 on coverage, may have pulled it away. They're going to give him the catch. Wow. Steve Anderson, the player down on the field. You take a look at Sapunches make the catch. 
He's got the football. Now he's reaching out for the first down. I think it's a good call. He reached out for the first down. He was down again. Another smart play by David Sapunjas. Jimmy Reed late pulled it out. And a good call by the officials. Well, what a, again, smart heads-up play. Able to reach out and try to pick up that first down. Because they would not have had the first down, Mike. There's no way that he had the first down until he stretched it out. And I think they're still a little bit short. Just a bit, bring up a third and one, and they'll try to use that one-yard cushion as we spoke of earlier. Yep. Now, Calgary has run the football on a dozen occasions and put it in the air 30 times, and that's about right. I don't think Wally Buono has really changed his offensive game plan much, and as we've seen, Jeff Garcia has the ability to scramble. Obviously, he's no Doug Flutie. As a matter of fact, nobody in the Canadian Football no. League is. But still, they've run the same kind of offense, and they've gone to reliable guys like David Sapunjas. Good mix of their play call, and those 12 runs have kept the defense honest. And I would think on this quarterback sneak, Jeff Garcia may want to stay inside a little bit more. Last time he got away with going outside and in, outside the offensive guard, but I think I'd stay inside if I was Jeff on this one. And 12 runs without their number one running back, Tony Stewart, in the lineup. So credit not only the play of Jeff Garcia, but also Sean Daniels in relief of Tony Stewart. Well, Sean Daniels has been big because not only has he run the ball a couple times for good games, but he's also provided good protection for Jeff Garcia. Working his way off the field under his own power. And Sean Bratley coming into the football game. As it will be third and one football on the 45-yard line. This Calgary offense trying to push their lead up. From the present 11 points at 20 to 9. will get the first down for the ball carrier the quarterback Jeff Garcia met by Angelo Snipes someone whether it was Angelo Snipes or Mark Ledbetter got a little penetration there which you don't want to see on a quarterback sneak and made the head let's see the penetration here to Jeff Garcia maybe maybe he fumbled the snap but it's Angelo Snipes but the second effort by Jeff Garcia created the first down Garcia went right over Jay McNeil number 50 out of Kent State the rookie offensive lineman you try to tell a quarterback when a quarterback sneaks, stay slow or stay as low as you can and keep your shoulders parallel and get that first down. From the 47 now, Garcia on first and 10. Scampers up through the pocket, has a blocker. Now he works to the outside by himself and he is hit inside Birmingham territory by Tommy Orr. A gain of 17 yards on the keeper by the quarterback, Jeff Garcia. Mike, what else would you ask of your quarterback tonight? He's run the ball, he's made decisions. Drops back here, knows that no one's open. He's going to tuck the ball away, and now he becomes a pretty good running back. Tommy Orr makes the tackle, but I have not seen Jeff Garcia make a mistake tonight. What's the rest He's of the league air saying? Free. Yeah, what's the rest of the league saying? Thinking maybe they would get a break with Flutie out of the lineup, and they're sitting at home, those not playing tonight, watching Jeff Garcia look equally as impressive. He gives the football to Daniels. Daniels goes through the middle, big hole, and near a first down. Tommy Orr there again, gain of 10 yards on the play, and it looks like another first down for the Calgary Stampeders. Well, John Huffnagel really has to feel good about his game plan tonight. He has protected Jeff Garcia. Sean Daniels has picked up for Tony Stewart. The offensive line is performing well. Sapunjas, Alan Pitts, Pee Wee Smith on the outside, Terry Vaughn. Everybody is picking up. When you lose a great player, everybody else has to pick the game up a little bit, and that's what's happening with Calgary. The offensive line doing their share of the Omen's work. Denny Kanopoulos with a great block, springing up that nine-yard gain, setting up the second and one, and on the keeper again, Garcia, trying to gain Calgary another first down. Jimmy Reed, Sean Brantley there to stop Garcia on the keeper. It makes it a bit easier to be on the sidelines injured when your team's playing well. Yeah, and you're a part of that because you're coaching, you're help coaching Jeff Garcia when he comes off the field. Doug Flutie staying in the ball game since the play's called by John Huffnagel. So he can help Jeff Garcia when he comes to the sideline. Uh, Len Williams, the man you saw on the sidelines with the clipboard, the former Northwestern quarterback who played last year with the posse of Las Vegas. Team since disbanded. So first and ten, football on the 35-yard line. Garcia under center. Steps up in the pocket again. He is met from behind this time by Sean Brantley.
Late flag coming in also. A loss of five on the play. Penalty on the field appears to be against the Major foul, unnecessary roughness, Calgary number 50, second down. So on Jay McNeil, who's sitting in for Rocky, Rocco Romano, who was hurt uh, early in the game, did not start the game. Jay McNeil has moved into that spot, and he's called for that foul. Rocco Romano suffering from back spasms. And not in the lineup, so some offensive line changes on both teams. And nothing less, it sets them back 15 yards, second and 25. And after the loss of five and the 10-yard penalty, they go to Terry Vaughn. Vaughn goes up the sideline and tries to get at least some of the penalty yardage back as Jimmy Reed forced him out of bounds. Terry Vaughn ran that screen the way you want to run it. He was able to come back, and then he set up the block from Vince Danielson, number 88, who made the key block. And then what you want on that play, you just want to get back to the sticks where you're third and 10, third and 12, right in there. McLaughlin to come in and attempt a long field goal attempt. He can't miss a second, right? No. I mean, he's near perfect coming into this thing, so you wouldn't figure he'll miss another one. And he has made them from long distance this year. Coming into tonight, he was three for three from 40 to 49 yards. Three for four from 50 plus. This one's from 45. The kick is up, and as you mentioned, Coach, he would not miss again. Well, he's Mark like McLaughlin automatic. makes it 23 to 9. Calgary in the lead with 2:39 remaining in the third. I'd like to tell you about my friend Jake. Jake is music. If he's not playing, he's listening to music. He has a legendary music collection. He's got stuff from last century. Eight tracks. The best times we have are just when we sit down and pick up the guitars and play what comes to our heads. Jake's just a great friend. Western got his backstage passes. Yes. Everybody loves him. Not too sure the neighbors do, though. When you're with a friend as good as Jake, shouldn't you have a Heineken? What's with a bib? Is that a bib? It's a napkin. Looks like a bib. No, you know, I don't want to get stuff all over me. Well, then why'd you get that Western Whopper? I mean, it's got bacon, cheddar, barbecue sauce. Because I refuse to live my life in fear. Would you live your life in a bib? It's not a bib. It's not a bib. The flame broiled Whopper, now with cheddar cheese, hickory smoked bacon, and barbecue sauce. The Western Whopper, for a limited time at Burger King. See? Look at that. Works. What's that? That's breakfast. <laughs> Twenty-three to nine, Calgary in the lead. All right, coach, your star goes out. You got a young kid, Jeff Garcia, come into the lineup. Now I want you to look at his numbers: thirty-six of fifty, six hundred and six yards, and three touchdowns. Would you be pleased with that? I'd ask for a raise. <laughs> and if I'm John Huffnagel, I figure I had a great game plan. I'm going to go for the raise. John Ralston's probably sitting at home tonight. San Jose coach watching his former quarterback, Jeff Garcia, and probably very proud. Doug Flutie has to be, too. You know, anytime, and I think Flutie, you can say, is that type of player. Anytime he sees a young kid succeed, as so far Jeff Garcia has, he has to be pleased to see that the, the baton has been handed off, at least for now, because we're uncertain how long Flutie might be out of the lineup. But, but a Wally Pip, he will not be. <laughs> Flutie uh, was nice enough to join us in the open of tonight's game. We saw Dr. Frank Job on the West Coast yesterday has a slight tear in the elbow of his throwing hand. And it, it might be four to six weeks. He might require surgery at the end of the season. Right now, it's pretty tight-lipped exactly what will happen. And I'm not so sure that Doug Flutie knows exactly what's going on right now with his bat on. Mark McLaughlin, the short kick, taken by Cody. He has trouble handling it. Finally picks up the football. Jumps over a defender and now has room to run. Works to the outside of the field. Still on his feet. And into the territory. Eddie Britton on the return of 34 yards. Raymond Biggs finally caught up to him. Matt Cody with a good return. He's going to get a good block by Eddie Britton, number one. First of all, when the ball bounces a little bit, sometimes you outrun the coverage a little bit. 
Matt Cody sets up his offense in pretty good field position now. It is, this is it now. I mean, Birmingham has to get something moving here offensively. As stale as they have been, though, Coach, you look at the scoreboard, it's 23-9. It's a 14-point deficit. You're right, and Matt Dunnigan is not going to be poor the whole night. I mean, he's not. It, it, it's been a combination of some drop balls, some good coverage, but uh, there's the screen. And this defense of Calgary, as I mentioned earlier, frustrated Dunnigan and his teammates in the fourth quarter. Up until that drive last week, Eddie Britton makes the reception. And Marvin Pope to stop. They were a negative two yards in the fourth quarter before that game-winning drive that resulted in six straight completions to five different receivers engineered by Matt Dunnigan. Well, John Jenkins called a screen play, as you see Frank Spaziani on the other side, defensive coordinator now, but... They're going to try to use the screen a little bit like teams use the run. That's their running play. Uh, movement on the line. Number 62, Freddie Childress, jump before the play. Just look like they're out of sync. Again, they played a week ago, and they beat Calgary at their home field. And Procedure. Birmingham, number 62, still second down. But they should have enough respect to the players for, for Calgary. They know they're going to come in here and try to get the win in their home stadium. So... Uh, but I think Matt Dunnigan's got to, got to perform here, then, and he will perform. Now there's confusion again, way before anything happened. Well, the receivers Jason jumped Phillips on. jumped all the way into the backfield of Calgary. Already, instead of a second and one, we're in a second and six situation. You know, Jack Parkey was very, very volatile about his preparation this week, though, and telling his guys that prepare for Doug Flutie. Don't think we're going to have an easy time of it because Flutie might not play. Prepare for Doug Flutie and have the mindset that you're playing the best team in the Canadian Football League. You can tell them that all you want to, but when they see that Doug Flutie's not going to play, that's a little bit of a downer. And uh, but You talk about an expansion team here. They should be ready to play every week. And they have an opportunity to be at least at the halfway point tied with Baltimore. Now, Baltimore went to 7-3 and three tonight. And Birmingham, if they pull out a victory, go to 6-3. and three, So they would at least go through the first half of the season both at 6-3. and three. Done again. Too high. But it goes off one receiver's hands and into another. And on the reception was Jason Phillips. The football bounced off the hands of number 86. Ted Long, number 86, with a kind of a helping hand to Jason <laughs> Phillips. And that may be the type of play that ignites this offense. Matt Dunnigan with a high throw to Ted Long, number 86, just a little bit off his hands. Jason Phillips again with good concentration to make the catch. And a gain of 17. Now they're looking towards Marcus Grant throwing into double coverage and incomplete. Greg Knox, number eight, the safety, has had a wheel of a game in that secondary for Calgary. Been in the right spot. He's getting the signals from Frank Spaziani, giving the signals to his secondary, lining up different places, trying to confuse Matt Dunnigan, and so far has been successful. Second and 10 now. Football on the 33-yard line of Calgary. Dunnigan tries the same play, and this time the receiver slips and falls. Matt Cody, he tried to spring it loose with the fake again, but Will Johnson was right in the face of Matt Dunnigan, and Dunnigan may have had to readjust his throw a bit. Bluebirds are out. Hey, how fast they forget. Seven days. What have you done for me lately? And they weathered some rain. The skies are clear again. And a beautiful night here in Birmingham, Alabama. Mike Goldberg, Mike Godfrey. Final seconds ticking away. 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And a 42-yard field goal attempt on the way by Luis Sendejas. Dayhaas has been perfect this evening. And the driving kick is up and good, so all the scoring from Birmingham has come off the foot of Luis Sendejas. Four field goals, and once again, the lead is 11 for the Stampeders. And with a full quarter yet, Mike, I mean, they're still in pretty good shape offensively. CFL attendance in the U.S. cities, and they, they love their Baltimore football club. Here in the CFL, over 30,000 a night, and not bad attendance for an expansion team here in Birmingham, no, Alabama. I, I think it's a start, Mike. You look at Baltimore's attendance, you look at Birmingham's attendance, and the other three cities got to pick it up a little bit, but it's new. It's new to the people, and the rules are a little bit different, but I think the most, and you and I have talked about this, the most confusing 
of all is the two downs and the three downs punting on third down I I think that's where most people will have trouble watching this type of game but I, it's a very exciting game but I'd like to see four downs yeah and the real challenge will come in about a week when uh, that team coached by Terry Bowden and their counterparts in Alabama start their football field yeah but you hope it makes it there's a pretty good crowd here tonight they've got a great owner in Arthur Williams and you just hope that everything goes well for them and that they can make it because it's more jobs it's more opportunities for players and it's, it's an exciting brand of football and UAB to play football this year also in Conference USA uh, but I'll tell you what in the state of Alabama there are plenty of football fans to go around there are a bunch Dewey Smith and Marvin Coleman will come to the near sidelines in the way of Dewey Smith. Another short kick fielded at the 24-yard line by Smith. Smith with a good return out to the 42, a return of 17 yards hit by Donovan Gans. Good teams, Mike, answer scores. And then when somebody puts points on the board, good teams will take the ball right down and match the points and then try to try to go for the score. But the good teams answer scores. Coming into tonight, Calgary under the leadership. Uh, David Sapungis and, of course, the quarterback, Doug Flutie, had scored 37 points a game, averaged 445 yards, had 32 touchdowns, 229 first downs. That's good. Excellent. This will be the final play of the third quarter. Garcia fakes the handoff, and he is hit in the backfield by Shante Peoples. Second sack of the contest. As time ticks away here in the third, Birmingham still within striking distance. They trail 23 to 12 in the three. It is not surprisingly good again. McLaughlin now 24 of 26 on the year. And it makes the score Calgary 13, Birmingham 6. Calgary has been in control of this football game, but by no means do they have a commanding lead at 23 to 12. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the Los Angeles Dodgers head east to take on the Philadelphia Phillies. It's live on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball's Game of the Week. The NL West first place Dodgers try to widen the gap over the Rockies and Padres while the Phillies look to Darren Dalton to keep the boat afloat. Sunday Night Baseball, the Dodgers and Phillies tomorrow on ESPN. Garcia from the shotgun in the 39-yard line on a second and 13. He goes up top, and it is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Vince Danielson, as the hit was applied by Timmy Oates. That might have been the first mistake that uh, Jeff Garcia had tonight because he led the receiver into Tommy Oates, number 23. A badly thrown ball here. Bad decision. Here's the throw. Vince Danielson led right into Tommy Oates for the kill shot. That is the first incomplete pass thrown by Jeff Garcia in this second half. Tony Martino on to punt for just the third time. Pretty consistent at 42 and a half, a 41 and a 43 yard punt bus spot. A pardon me, 42 and 43. Martino. This kick will bounce in front of Eddie Britton. Britton plays it. They give him the five yards, and now Britton will try to take advantage. Scampering towards the outside, now he has to slow down his progress, and he's hit by a sea of white jerseys. A 42-yard punt and an eight-yard return for Eddie Britton. Matt Dunnigan looking to the clock. He knows he's at 14.08. 14 completions, 30 attempts, 153 yards, but has not been able to get his team in the end zone. He had four two and outs last week with that negative two yards before the game winner. Jeff Garcia was the counterparty quarterback and in the fourth quarter had rallied Calgary from a 10-point deficit. Speak of Calgary's defense, though, and, and really their offense in that same breath. The Calgary Stampeders football team has been dominant this year in the fourth quarter. They have outscored their opponents 81 to 15. I got a feeling, Mike, they're going to get a challenge here in the fourth quarter. Matt Dunnigan's too good to play 
and not get his team in the end zone. And when you look at it, as poorly as, as they played, they're only down by 11 with 14.02 on the clock. So I think Matt Dunnigan's going to get hot here and get this ball club moving. Dunnigan starts it off the right way. They go to the man you thought they should have been going to a long time ago. And the running back, Keith Woodside. Well, he's against the linebacker. Now, Greg Knox made the tackle there, but you still pick up five yards. Keith Woodside's the super back for him out of the backfield. You're going to see Greg Knox, number eight. He has to pick up Keith Woodside, and it's a good tackle. Greg Knox has played an excellent football game tonight. Now, Dunnigan trying to go up top. Has the receiver with a step on him, but the football caught out of bounds by Marcus Grant. Good pressure again on Matt Dunnigan. Alondra Johnson. Good pressure. Kept that ball from being thrown on the mark. Marvin Coleman was on the coverage. Matt Dunnigan off the shotgun. Alondra Johnson, number 51. Beats Tom Ram, the left tackle, number 55. Caused that ball to be thrown out of bounds. And another punting situation. Marvin Coleman back deep to receive. Scott Player, plenty of time. Gets away a high kick. Fielded his 27-yard line by Coleman. Coleman, not a lot of room to which to work, but he gets around the sideline and stays in bounce anyway. Now beats player, and Coleman's off to the races. Nobody will catch Marvin Coleman, who returns the punt for the touchdown for Calgary. This was college football. He'd be flagged right now for the new celebration rule. Marvin Coleman with a nice run. He did not have much room for which to work on the far side of the field. It looked like that the Birmingham players thought maybe he was out of bounds, and some of them gave up a little bit on the coverage. An 82-yard punt return for touchdown for Marvin Coleman. And the Boo Birds won't even boo right now. They're astonished by what has happened to their football team after such a great victory one week ago. Well, that was an excellent return, Mike, by Marvin Coleman. But I think a lot of players stopped on that play for Birmingham. They thought he was out of bounds. Interesting to note, Coleman just had the cast removed from his hand and reassumed his kicking duties tonight for the first time in five weeks. And the effect was felt immediately by Calgary and Birmingham. Calgary in the positive way, Birmingham negatively. Calgary's short a guy on their extra point team, so they'll have to take the penalty. Number one, baby. Number one. Murray coming on the field. Turner in the lead. That's Turner in the lead. <laughs> Laundra Johnson saying, Marvin Coleman, the best player, not in this league, but in any league, which would include this league, I suppose. Be a nice agent someday. You got that right. Coleman last year set a club record with 181 yards in punt return, gaining against the BC Lions. 4440 runner and he showed his speed there. So McLaughlin moves it back a couple of yards, but still is good on the convert to make the score. Calgary leading in a much more dominant fashion. 30 to 12. Coleman returns it 82 yards. <laughs> Yeah, it's got bacon and cheddar and a tangy barbecue sauce. How tangy is it? Is it really tangy? Not super tangy. It's good. And tangy. Not too tangy. No. <laughs> the flame broiled Whopper, now with cheddar cheese, hickory smoked bacon, and barbecue sauce. The Western Whopper, for a limited time at Burger King. On a scale of 1 to 10. Yeah. How tangy? What'd I say? Second year out of Central State, Marvin Coleman, the hero of the moment. Big mistake by the special teams of Birmingham. 
You're going to first of all see bad angles right here as they as the players are coming down here. Bad angles. Now stop it right here. And watch these re watch these defenders right here. The three of them. They kind of give up a little bit. They've got bad angles, but they kind of give up. Donovan Gaines, number 49, slow down a little bit. They think he's down or out of bounds, and then it's off to the races. Here's another look low. Good footwork by Marvin Coleman. Keeps himself balanced. Close to the side. Good block by Gerald Bond, number 38. And now they're off for the touchdown. 82 yards on the punt return for touchdown by Marvin Coleman. And so McLaughlin to kick off. Donald Moff at number 19 and number 5, Matt Cody, back deep to receive. Cody will take it at the 17-yard line. Cody working to the near side of the field, trying to use his speed to get around the special teams players. Does so, but is forced out of bounds at the 43-yard line. A good return of 25 yards as Frears was able to force him out of bounds at the 43. Mike, sometimes when you win a game like uh, Birmingham won last week, then the expectation level goes high. But you got to remember now for Jack Pardee, this is an expansion team put together with a lot of players that were cast off to different places. So they've already form, performed pretty well, I think, do, during this season. And they're getting better every week. They're a little flat tonight with the, with the win that they had last week, a little flat going into this ballgame. Now they get decent field position now to work from the 43-yard line. They trail by 18 with 12 minutes remaining. Done again. Lots of time. Dumps it off to Eddie Britton. Britton cuts back and gets into Calgary territory. Alondra Johnson chased him down after a gain of 15. Well, Jack Pardee has such an impressive coaching resume. He is the only man to coach in the World Football League, the NFL, the USFL, NCAA Division I, and now the Canadian Football League. Did he miss any? Uh, not he yet. Maybe the Arena League. Well, the Arena League, Division II, but he's not finished yet either. So he's still got some time. But he's been in every league, and he's done a great job in every league. Marcus Cramped on the reception, close to another Birmingham first down. Al Jordan chases down Marcus Grant. Good block by former Alabama tackle Roosevelt Patterson, number 68, to try to spring Marcus Grant, number 81. There's Big Roosevelt, six foot four, 295, his alma mater in big time practice down the road in Tuscaloosa right now. Facing a tough year. I think they've got a lot of talent. Very well could be 11 and 0, 10 and 0 when they get to play Auburn last few years. Wide on the play, Dunnigan works out of the pocket, scampers towards the sideline, has room, and then finally steps out at about the 33-yard line. Marvin Pope was there to force him out. Flag on the play, as we mentioned, though, will await the initial signal. And it goes against Birmingham. And something good happens, something bad follows. This game's been pretty well officiated tonight. This has been, been a nice crew. They've done a nice job. If you look at Jack Hardy and... John Jenkins, both excellent football coaches. Both understand the run and shoot and know it very, very well. Tiger Ellison, a high school coach in Middletown, Ohio, kind of invented the run and shoot offense back in the 50s. You mentioned this, uh, and I don't want to say makeshift because that's not the proper team, but it's a, it's a team put together of a lot of players who weren't able to stick other places. Five rookies on the offense and really seven rookies on the defense starting for Jack Pardee. And that's why I say, you know, they had a big game last week. They won a big game in your expansion team, and they haven't handled it very well, but they'll learn that as they get a little bit older in this league. The credit Calgary. They lost, so they came with more incentive tonight. Without Doug Flutie, Matt Finley, one of their starting linebackers, and also without Tony Stewart. But Birmingham with Ted Long gains the first down. Mike, I'm going to say it right now. I'm not giving up on him. We could have a fantastic finish here. Yet tonight, Birmingham's got a lot of offense. If they just get untracked a little bit, they'll make a game of this. They're only down 18, still 10-18 to go, which is an eternity in the Canadian Football League. A gain of 20, first and 10. Done again with protection, and it goes incomplete. Pressure was coming from the backside by Raymond Biggs. The pass was tipped by Shreko Zizipkovic. Good for about three or four plays by Shreko. Well, and then it I, won't be so easy to say. The play-by-play -play guy just couldn't say it. <laughs> just a little while ago on the public address system, so you have it down perfect. It's <laughs> all that hockey experience. You learn to say some of those names. Now it's done again. 
Over the middle, incomplete. Will there be a flag? Yes. Alondra Johnson Definitely. got a hit on Ted Long in the flag fly. Definitely interference on Alondra Johnson out of West Texas State. Number 51 just ran into the back of Ted Long, kind of pushed him. Ted Long out of Oklahoma. Former high school running back. There's the push. Did not allow him the chance to catch the football. Calgary's been tough on defense inside the 30-yard line tonight. They have not allowed Birmingham the touchdown. Played great defense inside the red zone. Well, Dunnigan has to find the end zone right here. Under 10 minutes remaining, trailing by 18. Now uh, work at first and 10 from the shotgun ball on the 20-yard line. Dunnigan checks off to both sides of the field. Now he looks to the near side, has the receiver, Jason Phillips. Phillips trying to break through the arms of a would-be tackler, but Marvin Coleman was there to help out. You look at these receivers from Birmingham, they're all small receivers. Eddie Britton, 5'10", 165, Grant, 5'9", 176. Jason Phillips, 5'8", 170, but they're guys that can make catches and speed that they can stretch the defense down the football field. Gain of five on the play, second and five. Ball on the 15, Dunnigan. Now works back. Dunnigan still looking for someone to spring open. Goes end zone, almost intercepted. Al Jordan defensively almost picked off the Dunnigan pass. Mike, there's a time in the game where you've got to go for it. I think they've got to go for it here. They've got to try to throw the ball and get the first down. They cannot afford a field goal here with 858. Good pressure applied by Big Daddy Marvin Pope, number 91. Just need to gain five yards. It's off the side, down. And now working his way to the field, number 96, Shreko Zizikovic. He's testing me. And there you see number 91, Big Daddy Marvin Pope, one of the favorites in the city of Calgary, Alberta. Central State graduate. They put a lot of good football players in the Canadian Football League. I know you follow the Canadian Football League every week. One of my former linebackers, Willie Quest, the yep. main player of the week last uh, week in the Canadian League. is an excellent player, Danny Barrett. I had him at Cincinnati. He's an excellent quarterback. I'm very proud of both of them. There's a lot of former players, Murray, Cincinnati, that I've had uh, that have gone on the Canadian Football League and done very well. well Willie Quest is as good a defensive player as there is in the CFL. Plays for the Edmonton Eskimos. And really, you come into Edmonton and you play defense, you have to remember the great defensive units. Everybody talks about what Warren Moon did in his days in Edmonton, but it was also a great defense led by a friend of ours who does the games here on ESPN, Danny Kepley. And back when they were winning championships, they were doing it with defense. And so Willie's in, in great company to play the kind of defense he does coach. Willie well, was the best linebacker I've ever coached, and uh, he just had a nose for the football, made a lot of plays for the University of Kansas. We talk about the best defensive players, uh, linebackers especially. Willie Pless comes to mind, and Alondra Johnson, number 51 here for Calgary. Those guys seem to always battle for supremacy in the defensive ranks in the Western Division of the CFL. Third and five, big play for Dunnigan and his teammates. He goes towards the end zone, and Eddie Britton. Britton makes the reception, yes or no? They're going to say he was out of the back of the end zone. Coverage on the play by Marvin Coleman. Just hung the football up a little bit too long for Eddie Britton. And off walks the offensive unit of the Birmingham Barracudas. Barracudas look towards Britton. He just couldn't keep the foot in. Marvin Coleman with good coverage. I don't know if he hit Britton a little bit too soon there before the play, but uh, good coverage. Nonetheless, Birmingham comes up empty. Calgary will have the football when we come back. efforts if you missed it he had an 82 yard punt return for touchdown <laughs> his teammates are not so impressed well, they nicknamed him ice they just threw some at him <laughs> hey, Ray. 
And on the other side, a disappointing night for the Barracudas of Birmingham thus far with 8.40 remaining. And there was a big situation there. 15-yard line, the line of scrimmage. Had a second and five. Came away empty. Went for it on third down. And once again, Dunnigan unable to complete the pass to Eddie Britton. So Calgary takes over. And their quarterback, Jeff Garcia. Garcia not afraid to throw up top right away. Trying to run the football down. And calling it in was Pee Wee Smith, number 86. What a reception by Pee Wee Smith. He caught up to the football. Outran Anthony Drawhorn. Former Miami, Florida receiver, Pee Wee Smith, using that speed to catch up with that football. Well-thrown ball by Jeff Garcia again against Tommy Oates and Anthony Drawhorn. Two defensive backs, but that ball was thrown on the mark again. Jeff Garcia has had a great night, Mike. I tell you, he has performed, uh, I'm sure, beyond the expectations, even of his coaches. 44-yard gain on the play. Football now spotted at the 50-yard line of the Barracuda. A good block goes over the right side still on his feet and pulls his way into the 33 yard line eddie davis finally hauled him down 17 yard gain on the carry by daniel my most valuable player tonight would be john huffnagel and frank spaziani the two coordinators because they've had two very good game plans because birmingham is a very well coached football team as you see john huffnagel right there and uh, i just think that uh, Two excellent game plans, and when you take out Tony Stewart, your running back, Doug Flutie, your quarterback, and then defensively, you're up against what is a great offensive team. Just two great performances. Again, working off that big offensive line, Angelo Snipes hauls down Sean Daniels from behind. Guys like Jay McNeil, Jamie Crisdale, Bobby Pandelitis. The offensive line of Calgary deserves their share of the credit, too. They really do. Uh, I mean, they've been able to keep the pressure off of Jeff Garcia. Uh, They've been able to run the football. They've been able to have their way tonight. But again, and I go back to what I said earlier, the motivation and incentive is totally on the favor of Calgary. When you're coming back from a weak loss, when you have play the same ball club, the advantage is yours. Garcia shows the football now, throws it the way of David Sapungis, and he is bought down at the 10-yard line by Anthony Drawhorn. Sapungis with over a dozen receptions. Good blocks again by Chronopolis and Bobby Pandelitis, enabling the time for Jeff Garcia to find the sponge. David Sapungis just has good hands. He's able to go out and catch the football. See, he doesn't wait for the ball. He's able to take his hands out and grab it and bring it back in. He's an excellent receiver. And what numbers tonight for David Sapungis? Career high, 13 receptions, 208 yards, and two touchdowns. Daniel up to the six. This drive is burning a lot of clock time also for Calgary. And this could make the score 37 to 12. And then I think you can turn the lights down on the Birmingham Barracudas. Five minutes, 35 seconds, the clock ticking down here at Legion Field first half of the season for all intents and purposes coming to an end tonight. And offsides on Birmingham, so it'll be first now in five. First and goal situation set up at the five-yard line. And they're actually going to spot it right outside the five, so they keep gain the first down, coach. Yes, barely. But I think they're thinking end zone. They give to Daniels, and he is hit right away. Met by Shante Peoples. And Angelo Snipes. Well, Shante enjoyed the partaking in Ann Arbor at least this afternoon. As the college football season began. Tomorrow, Ohio State and Boston College. Who are you like in that ball game? I'm uh, an Ohio native, so I got to go with John Cooper and the Buckeyes. I think the Buckeyes will be okay tomorrow. Be a tough ball game. Boston College got some pretty good players, but they lost Boyd and Mamula, two good defensive players. So I think the defensively they will not be the tough defense they were last year. Second and five towards the end zone. Touchdown, Daniels. Calgary gets the touchdown. An impressive drive capped off by the block by Pandelitis and the five-yard run by Sean Daniels out of Bowling Green. Well, with the score the way it is now, maybe we can pick up our high-priced sideline reporter here pretty soon <laughs> and get a chance to visit with him. 
the and highest see if he sideline reporter in uh, television history. Well, I, the, I, I tell you what, there's another guy. Dr. Jerry Punch makes a lot of money, but, uh, but Jeff Garcia has really had a great night, and we'd like to see what Doug thinks a little bit about his performance tonight. The rushing yardage, Calgary just uh, 95 yards. Birmingham just 15 yards tonight. And for the point after, Mark McLaughlin to make it 37 to 12, Stan Peters. And the streak continues of consecutive converts for McLaughlin. When we come back, our sideline reporter to be introduced. 4-12 remaining in the contest. Mike Goldberg, Mike Gottfried here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. The Calgary Stampeders in control, 37 to 12. And Doug Flutie down on the sidelines. Doug, we just said you're the highest paid sideline reporter in television history. Hey, I feel like a kicker. I go out on kicking game and that's it, come over. I know what the punter and the kicker feel like now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Jeff Garcia could not be more impressive this hey, evening. Jeff's had a great night. We did a lot of things scheme-wise that gave him a little bit of problems, given our formations into the boundary. And Jeff just executed beautifully. He hit the peewee on a beautiful post route for a big, big play, getting us out of our own end there. Doug, I think it's an excellent game plan by John Huffnagel because he was able to kick, take the pressure off Jeff Garcia early with some play actions and some good double teams on snipes. So he really gave him yeah. a chance to perform well early. We've run the ball better tonight than we have all year. And uh, I think everybody picked it up a step and knew we had to at least have the threat of a run, do some play action. And then uh, Jeffy letting it fly. You know, in all fairness, Doug, since your arrival in Calgary, you've done so well offensively that sometimes the defense has been overshadowed. But we saw tonight what Calgary defensive play is all about. No question about it. They've shut Matt down so far. He still <laughs> may end up with some decent stats and a couple of touchdowns before it's over, the way he plays. But, uh, yeah, they, they do an excellent job every week. Doug, that defensive unit with Marvin Pope and Alondra Johnson, I mean, to go through what they did last week, to have Dunnigan with the great heroics at the end of the game, that's something that the defense takes personally, and they came out with a vengeance tonight, didn't they? They really do. Uh, they, they do take a lot of pride in things like that. They don't want teams to score on them. They don't want the extra yardage. Even at the end of the game here, they're, they're excited about shutting them down. Last week was a little embarrassing to them as far as total yards and all that and uh, they stepped it, stepped it back up. Mar there's no better linebacker pair than Marvin and A.J. Doug, B.C., Ohio State tomorrow. Now, don't give, me that, uh, uh, yeah. don't give me that city line there now about Boston College, but just tell me what your thoughts on that game. I'm just rooting like heck for them, and I don't, you know, I don't know how strong they're going to be this year, but uh, they got a great team coming back from what they did last year. Last year, they finished up real strong, so I believe in them. You know who Dr. Jerry Punch is, <laughs> Doug, our sideline reporter? Sure. You know who Jerry Punch is, our sideline reporter? I don't know. We're going to get him dressed like you are for our <laughs> next ball game Thursday night. All right, go get it. Go after it. Well, get healthy, Doug, and uh, we love visiting with you, but we'd rather see you with your helmet on playing. All right, thanks a lot. Hi, everybody back home. Yeah, Hi, Larry. Doug Flutie, the 1984 Heisman Trophy Award winner and the most outstanding player in the CFL the last four seasons, the first ever to win that award in four consecutive years. And there's the counterpart when you talk about quarterbacks going to the Hall of Fame, but it has been a long and frustrating night for number 16 in the blue. Well, he's had a good uh, effort by the defense, and uh, they've just been able, been unable to get on track tonight, Mike. Uh, Matt Dunnigan's an excellent quarterback. They'll bounce back. Another punching situation for Scott Player, Kiwi Smith, and Marvin Coleman back deep. You know Coleman wants the football. He's driven back to the 15-yard line, mishandled it, picks it up at the 5, and he is chased down there, brought down at the 4-yard line. Marvin Coleman. Three minutes and 14 seconds remaining. A 65-yard punt with the aid of the mishandling of the football. As Eddie Davis chased down Marvin Coleman, and Scott Player gets credit for the 65-yarder. Well, we've seen just about everything tonight, except the single, which is called La Rouge. In French game. And that's when the missed field goal is not returned from the end zone in the CFL. But, you know, Coach, I know you see the CFL in bits and pieces. We wanted it to be here in, in all facets for you this evening. Sorry we couldn't have a rouge. Well, the game's not over yet. That's we, right. might, we might pick one up, and I'm glad you explained that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Garcia, 
just those six years of French, I like to at least use the one or two words did I you learned. Learn that at Miami of Ohio. Yes, I did. Make sure I didn't take that class at 8 a.m. so I would show up once in a while. Working out of the end zone, Garcia rolls to Allen Pitts. Well, that's one thing we haven't been able to see is Allen Pitts break the all-time record for Stan Peters receivers, but that still is a possibility of happening. He was 38 shy prior to that reception. We'll take a break. Three-minute warning upon us. We're in the fourth. ESPN 2's coverage of the Canadian Football League is brought to you by Heineken, America's number one imported beer. And by Pep Boys. For quality parts, accessories, and service, come to Pep Boys, America's automotive super center. Craig Knox in the defensive unit deserves great credit for the job they have done defensively and offensively. The story has been David Sapunches with 13 receptions, a career high night. And they all come from the quarterback number seven, Jeff Garcia, in and relief of Doug Flutie. Working deep from the four-yard line, second and ten, Garcia. Garcia in trouble, kicks out of the end zone, and it'll be a punting situation from the goal line. Almost a safety to add to this night. Jimmy Reed made the tackle. Sam Ritigliano, the former Cleveland Brown head coach, has joined us now. Uh, Sam, what's your thoughts of the Canadian game? Well, I think it's a wide open game, a lot of fun. Jack Pardee's not having very much <laughs> fun tonight. You know, Mike, uh, those quarterbacks are the kingmakers. Uh, uh, Calgary obviously is getting a great job done by a backup quarterback, and to me, that's the difference. Do you think that? the Canadian game will catch on to the people uh, you know we you and I talked at halftime right. about the three down type of thing and uh, what, what's your thoughts on that I like some of the rules I really do I like the wide field I like the kicking game where they can't fair catch it I like a lot of those things but I just wonder about the third down well I think that that's a part of it that uh, you know in the American game you know that third down Mike gives you a little bit more of an offensive show because you know they're thinking now after first down they have to give the ball up on the next down I would think that part of it, uh, if they went to four downs, I think it would be a wide open game. And it's worked in Canada. I think it just needs some time in the States. And after all, it's only a couple of years. Garcia runs through the end zone, happy to give up the two points. And so the Cuda defense gets a couple of points. Coach, you're down here in Birmingham, and, and you see a city that loves its football, and obviously great collegiate uh, fans in the state of Alabama. Do you think in time they'll embrace this Canadian game? Well, obviously, this is uh, Southeastern Conference country. You know, I think they can compete with the National Football League. I, I think that there's a place for it. I, I think that eventually that, uh, you know, if they stay with it, they'll they'll draw their 25 or 30. They have some sanity in terms of what they're paying the players. And, you know, they got that one player. And I think that today it ha just has to make sense economically. And I think they can make money and, uh, and have a good uh, entertainment package. And certainly we just saw Jack Pardee on the sidelines. To have a guy like Jack Pardee running your program, it gives it a great amount of credibility. Oh, no question about it. You know, Jack was at Chicago, Washington, Houston, the University of Houston. Every place he's ever been, he's been a winner. And so, and as I said to the owner just a few minutes ago, Mike, burn the film. That's Look right. Next week, it's, it's, just burn it. It's a tough game coming back from beating this team a week ago and then to come back, all the incentives with Calgary. But, Sam, you've coached on every level, and I know right. you're here with your president tonight. Right. How, are you, how are things going with you? Well, I'm at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia with Dr. Jerry Falwell, and I'm coaching 1950 kids in 1995, and I'm having fun. That's great. Well, you've been a great gentleman in football Thank and you. one I'm proud to call friend. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. And tell Boomer I said hi. Thanks, Sam. Sam Ritigliano, the former head coach of the Cleveland Browns, now at Liberty University. And in a quarterback, number 15, Jimmy Klingler, out of Houston, younger brother of David Klingler, the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals. And so the night has come to an end for Matt Dunnigan, and Will Johnson got to Klingler on the last play to record another sack to his impressive career totals. You look at him with the helmet on, looks a little bit like Big Brother, doesn't he? Well, he does. He had a nice career down at the University of Houston under John Jenkins. 
in a mop-up job right now. Signed as a free agent last year by Saskatchewan and released in camp, so considered a CFL rookie. And a long night uh, for Matt Dunnigan. And speaking of college football, ESPN's coverage kicks off Thursday at 7.30 with the Russell Athletic Weekend Kickoff Show. And then what a matchup we have. Oklahoma State and the number two team in the nation, led by the senior quarterback Tommy Frazier, the defending national champion, Nebraska Cornhuskers. Mike Patrick, the good Dr. Jerry Punch, and my partner tonight, Mike Godfrey, to bring you all the play-by-play -play action. We begin at 7.56 p.m. Eastern Time. Looking forward to CFA Primetime, Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Thursday. The injured player that we are awaiting to walk his way off the field is number 55, Thomas Raham. And the first half of the season will come to an end with a record of 5-4 and four for Birmingham. And Calgary will up their record to 8-1. and one. And they are off the next 10 days before their much-anticipated Labor Day Classic against arch-rival Edmonton. The Eskimos and the Stampeders play Labor Day weekend every year in the Canadian Football League. Two hours separate those two cities in Alberta, Canada. Klingler goes up and incomplete. And the two minutes remaining clock stops with 141. And intended for Marcus Grant. Nothing has gone right tonight for the Birmingham team uh, on either side of the ball. Just has been a night that, uh, as Sam said, burn the film. Doug Flutie, his night's over as a sideline reporter. And he got another job now. No kidding. Now, he's such a great ambassador to this league. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, he's beloved in Calgary. I mean, there was a time there was a uncertain future of that Calgary football club in the Canadian Football League. And then they got a guy to come to quarterback them from the BC Lions named Doug Flutie. And the rest, as they like to say, is history. They win a great cup and have been in contention for one since then. Well, he's an excellent player, and as you said today, the Rocket, when he went into the Canadian League to draw so, so much interest that Doug Flutie's up there and successful. And I think Doug Flutie could be successful in the NFL. In the right system, in the right club, he could be successful there. I'm just going to try to sign as many as I can. He uh, broke some hearts down here in Legion Field years ago, too. They always talk about the comeback against Miami and the Hail Mary reception, but he broke a few Alabama Crimson Tide fans' hearts one day on a Saturday afternoon of college football. Said that was his biggest thrill. They'd beaten him the year before at uh, Boston in a snowstorm and uh, came back down here and won again in Birmingham. You don't see this very often. Game's still going on. He's got time to talk to us and then uh, sign some autographs. And this is what some of the fans, they love their Barracudas, or hopefully they're beginning to love them and embrace them as Coach Rotigliano talked about, but they all came tonight to see Doug Flutie. Unfortunately, they saw him most of the time with the baseball cap on. Well, they saw him work a little bit with us. No, I, I think that was a... Good work, uh, Yeah, too. he did some good work with us. Watch out, Dr. Jerry. But Doug's got a few years, I think, left in his CFL career. One of the marquee players, so he is one making a big salary in the CFL. As is Matt Dunnigan. And that's how the salary structure works. There's a marquee player who you can pretty much pay the pay the ranch to, and then the salary cap is, is very stringent after that. Matt Dunnigan, the highest paid player in the CFL, and Garcia making just a microcosm of both those guys. Well, look at that. Look at those numbers tonight. 26, 35. Three touchdown passes and no INTs. 447 yards in the air for Jeff Garcia. One minute and six seconds remains. Next week, don't forget, ESPN coverage of the CFL continues. Timeout called on the field by Birmingham. These same Birmingham Barracudas will try to regroup as they make their last trip to the country of Canada to take on the Rough Riders of Ottawa. And that game will be played on Friday night up in the capital of the country of Canada, Ottawa, Ontario. I'd hate to play this ball club next week because I think Birmingham will bounce back. John Jenkins, uh, who's an excellent coach, will get this offense and get him going. And uh, you're going to see a different Birmingham team next week. Eddie Britton, Matt Cody, back deep to receive. Our 
Tino has not been called upon on frequent occasion tonight. The low driving kick, kick take by Britton at the 35-yard line. Britton scampers up back to the 43, a 45-yard punt, a return of seven. Kevin Reed makes the special teams play. Mike, I've enjoyed working with you tonight. You're going places. You're good. Thank you very much, Coach. Enjoy the CFL schedule. You've got a great schedule forthcoming. Looking forward to it, and uh, it's going to be an exciting college football season. Uh, all kicking off this week, Thursday night. Uh, we've got Oklahoma State and Nebraska, and Saturday, Syracuse at North Carolina. So really two good games. Jumping right into it, coverage of college football all year on ESPN, and also a great schedule of college games on ESPN2 this upcoming season. There really are some great games, and uh, they're going to be exciting. Klingler goes to Phillips. Phillips is hit at the line of scrimmage, basically. A gain of two. Marvin Pope was there along with Raymond Biggs. I'll tell you what, it was a pleasure to work with the crew here that will be bringing you the CFA assignment and all the guys tonight. Thanks for a great job done here on your CFL warm-up for uh, college football season forthcoming on ESPN. And everybody looks forward to that prime time. You sit down on a Saturday evening, you've watched a handful of games, and you kick back and listen to Mike Gottfried and Mike Patrick and Ron Franklin bring you some great action. Well, thank you. It's, it's a lot of fun. So now just 30 seconds remaining. Al Jordan defensively for Calgary. And you can't say enough, and, and Doug mentioned it too, about this Calgary defense. They hold Birmingham to just 14 points, and that's really unthinkable in the CFL. Good game plan tonight by Frank Spaziani. He's had that towel over his shoulder on the sidelines, and uh, he has just put together a nice plan tonight. And Greg Knox, the free safety, there you see Frank. Right in your picture now with the towel on his shoulder. Uh, Greg Knox, the safety, number eight, just with an excellent game. One more time, Coleman to try to thrill the crowd. Watching at home in Calgary because not anybody was happy here in Birmingham when he returned the last kick, 82 yards. Scampering up, has a little bit of room. Coleman again springs himself free. Caught from behind this time at the 43-yard line. 51-yard kick, 27-yard return. Fifteen seconds remaining. Calgary, as I mentioned earlier, will up their record to eight and one. They open the season seven and zero. Oh. Upset last week up at their home stadium, McMahon Stadium, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. But they are back on the winning track, and we'll have time to sit back and enjoy this one. Ten days off before they meet the Eskimos of Edmonton. Should in the football game. And don't forget, we'll check in with all the happenings that big Michigan comeback. Reese Davis standing by in our ESPN2 studios with the Sports Smash. And plenty of baseball to talk about. And before we know it, we're going to be talking postseason baseball here as the month of August has almost been eaten up. What a night it was for the Calgary Stampeders. Wally Buono sees his defense play effectively. And the big stars offensively were Jeff Garcia and David Sapunches. The final score, Calgary 37, Birmingham 14.